live from the Maverick Center in West Valley City, it shoots off Grizzlies hockey. And since game two of 72 in the regular season, game two of a two game set between the Grizzlies and the Tulsa Oilers. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whitey. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies hockey as it's one of three games in the league this afternoon. The Grizzlies began the regular season on the right note as they defeated the Tulsa Oilers 5 to 3 and in front of a pretty good crowd of 6,526. Kyle Betts and Brandon Cutler each had one goal and one assist. Trent Miner was solid in that as he stopped 32 of 35. There was also an outstanding performance from Kyle Mayhew, who had one goal and was a plus four in the victory. Grizzlies captain Josh Wesley had one assist and was a plus three in his Grizzlies debut. Tulsa outshot Utah 35 to 32 in the game. The Oilers really made some hay on the power play. They were two for four on the power play, scored two power play goals. Both, both teams had a shorthanded goal in the contest. Grizzlies had their way five on five as they outscored the Oilers three to nothing in five on five situations. And with the victory, the Grizzlies are now over the 500 mark in regular season openers as they are now 14, 13, and two. Got a big goaltending matchup once again today. Trent Miner will get the start for the second straight evening. And for Tulsa, making his professional debut is Tomas Sukanik, who played the last couple years with the Tri-City Americans in the WHL. Should be a lot of fun. The fans are still filing in here. And it looks like we got a good Sunday afternoon of hockey. Uh, one week we return to the Utah Grizzlies pregame report. We'll go over the Grizzlies roster as well as some of the key defensemen for the Grizzlies tonight. One change to the Grizzlies lineup. Kay Jensen will make his professional debut. Oddly enough, the guy he's replacing in the lineup was his Mount Royal teammate, Jared Power, as those guys were teammates in college. And Jensen replaces Power in the Grizzlies lineup. We'll go over the starters as well. And it's based off about 18 minutes from now. And it looks like a good crowd's filing in here to Maverick Center. It should be a lot of fun if you're in the West Valley area. Come on down to Maverick Center. DVR the NFL games. Enjoy some Grizzlies hockey with us. If not, we got the games right here. Flow Sports for the video feed. And YouTube for the Grizzlies audio channel. We'll come back and give you the starting lineups for both teams. And we'll also go over the Grizzlies defensive unit. And a couple new key forwards for the Grizzlies who played well last night. We're in business on a Sunday afternoon, and you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Welcome back to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Director of Grizzlies Insiders, Tim Broussard. Uh, Tim, last night, the Grizzlies got good performances from Kyle Betts and Brandon Cutler. Two new forwards, though, that I thought also played well, Nathan Burke and Ryan Sandlin. Both guys uh, looked like they were pretty good. Yeah, Burke and Sandlin, watch them in the warm-ups. They've got some wicked shots. There's definitely some, some action on there, and it's tough to track. Mix that with a little bit of traffic in front, and I think our uh, Tulsa goalie is going to have a tough time. With every goaltender, you got the fundamentals, and it seems like Trent Leonard's got the fundamentals down. He's got his routine locked in. He played well last night, and we'll see what he does again this afternoon. Yeah, the ones that went in, I really didn't have too much of a problem. I mean, power play, you know, two power play goals that were off of, uh, you know, deflections or bodies in front. Can we call it a non quality goal? <laughs> we'll talk more about the, what constitutes a non quality goal later, but yeah, it, it's the, the other one, and the, the uh, what the last one was that shorty giveaway that uh, Wesley had, and he had no chance. So uh, I, I like the way that he has his vision in front, and he's keeping the, the puck and the pace out in front of him. Really wasn't fighting it, and probably the most important was rebound control. 
consistent message all the way through the game was his rebound control. I think early on you want to test the new goaltender for Tulsa, Tomas Sukanik, because he's making his pro debut. He might be a little bit nervous, wants to even get a couple on him early. Absolutely. I'd like to see a lot of east to west, get the guy moving. I mean, uh, honestly, when you're nervous, you have a tendency to overplay the puck. So you're going to be coming out when maybe you don't need to. Maybe, you know, maybe you hold back a little bit, you know, wait, wait for the game to come to you. I expect him to be a little bit impatient, a little bit nervous, and I'm hoping the Grizzlies can take advantage of that. Obviously, opening night, a lot of juice is in the building, a lot of nervous players. Today, you might have to bring your own energy a little bit more with the second of a two-game set, day game after a night game. A little bit. I'm still hopeful some people will track, you know, to start tracking in. And, uh, but, but darn it, uh, you know, bring your own energy. That's what it's going to take. we got some of the best fans. We just need them to be super loud. What are you going to be looking for here in the first period? Push. I want to see push by the Grizzlies. We, we started out really good in the first two periods, and I think I, I, we let off the gas a little bit. And the, the only way that we let Tulsa back in was complacency, and I think we got a little bit complacent. Maybe yeah, icon, iconized or whatever. I, I <laughs> We'll move on from that word, from, from the Wesley turnover. Got a little bit complacent and uh, uh, gave it up right in front of Miner, and it cost us. So I, I want to see that push. I want to see that skill. I want to see the, the defense moving up the, the puck to the, the offensive. A forwards in a position where they're attacking and and you know like last night i was really impressed with how many offsides we didn't get called for that means that your timing and your passing and your spacing was right on so that's what i'm going to see in the first 10 minutes first first 15 minutes of this game who's your pick for the opt-in first goal of the game oh gosh uh i'm gonna go that's a great question last night it was nathan burke uh could be anybody really that's, That's a great, great question. question. I'm going to go with Martel. Martel. You're going uh, with the rooster? The, I'm going to go with the rooster. His shot, and, and uh, uh, I think they're going to try to showcase him more. I think if, if we get that push, maybe we end up on a power play and uh, can uh, show him out to the, what, I guess, uh, the left side here and uh, see what he can do to the damage. Who's yours? Second straight game, I'm going with Nathan Burke. I didn't go with him last night, but I think he's going to get the optimum first goal of the game for the second straight day. Sounds like a solid choice. Well, it's not going to be the first intermission. Second and third intermission might be here. Uh, call the game with me. Mike, uh, hey, I'd love that. that. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks for the time. time. Yep. That's Grizzlies analyst for start. When we come back, we'll give you the starting lineups for, for both teams. It's Grizzlies and the Oilers coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Welcome back, back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. Hockey. It's Grizzlies and, and the Oilers. Not, not sure if it's just a typo on the sheet I got, but it says that Garrett Metcalf is in net for the Grizzlies this evening. Did see Trent Miner come out first uh, to warm up. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just a typo on the screen. They circled the wrong guy, but right now they've got Metcalf listed as a starter. We'll see who actually comes out in net for the Grizzlies this afternoon. Um, one of the things that's been intriguing here for the Grizzlies is really just about a brand new defensive unit. Kyle Mayhew, probably the senior member among the seven defensemen in the Grizzlies lineup, and he showed up right at the end of the regular season, had a pretty good playoff series, and met in Mayhew a one goal and has a plus four for the Grizzlies in last night's game. He was a plus four in the six-game playoff series against Idaho, and he'll be in there. He won't be a starter for the Grizzlies tonight, but he'll be one of seven defensemen for Ryan Kanaswich. Some of the more experienced defensemen, at least experienced in terms of guys with previous Grizzlies experience, are out of the lineup. Corey Thomas is out for the second straight game, nursing an injury. Grizzlies also without Jacob Semek, who played some games at the end of last season, the Arizona State product. Jordan Stone also out of the lineup. He's got two years of experience with the Grizzlies. Um, Jared Powers out of the lineup, uh, Grizzlies forward, Dakota Rabia out for the second straight game, and Cody Cron uh, also out. Uh, Cron might be back in a couple weeks, though, and I'm intrigued to see him, a very good physical presence who played with the Cincinnati Cyclones last season. He played against the Grizzlies, and he looked pretty impressive here at Maverick Center this past March. So the scratches for the Grizzlies once again, a Stone, Semek, Power, Ray B, Cody Cron, and Corey Thomas. 
the third goaltender is Dante Gianuzzi. And we'll keep an eye to see if it's just a typo on the sheet I got. But uh, it looked like Trent Miner came out first and was scheduled to start. But they do have Garrett Metcalf listed. We'll update you in a couple minutes uh, when the teams come out. Starting defensive pairing for Utah. Johnny Fairbrother, uh, he delivered the hit on Eddie Matsushima in the corner in the third period. Looks like he plays a pretty good physical game, six feet, 204 pounds. He's knocking off a little bit of the rust. He didn't play last season due to an injury. Before that, spent just about the entire season with the Laval Rocket of the AHL. He had one goal and six assists for the Rockets, or Rocket, in 25 games. Um, we mentioned he missed last season. He's in the last year of a three-year NHL entry-level deal. He was actually property of the Montreal Canadiens and was acquired by the Avalanche in the trade that sent Alex Newhook uh, to Montreal on June 27th of 2023. Fairbrother, former third-round pick by the Montreal Canadiens back in 2019. He was really intriguing to watch last night, and I'm really curious to see how he'll perform in his second game in a Grizzlies uniform. He didn't participate in the preseason. There was actually four Grizzlies that came over this week from the AHL. Fairbrother, along with Nathan Burke, Burke was actually acquired in a trade uh, with the Orlando Solar Bears. Um, Ryan Sandlin was acquired and was uh, brought over from the AHL, as well as goaltender Trent Miner. Um, we, got, we got a little bit about no, we got to know Burke and Sandlin a little bit last night, and I think Grizzlies fans really liked what they saw. Fairbrother's going to be one starting defenseman. Michael Underwood, who got an assist last night in his pro debut, he'll be the other starting defenseman for the Grizzlies. He started out training camp wearing number 24, switched over to number 54. He had a pretty good college career last year as a graduate transfer, played at Michigan State University, and before that had four solid seasons at Clarkson University. Fairbrother and Underwood are the starting defensive pairing for the Grizzlies tonight. We will also see the two experienced defensemen who've got veterans distinction. Keone Teixeira, who scored the goal with 10 seconds left. It was a five on three power play goal that uh, completed the scoring as he got Utah's fifth goal. He's actually a pretty good goal scorer for a defenseman as the goal last night was his 29th as a pro. This is his sixth season. Uh, started his pro career playing against Tulsa quite a bit as a member of the Wichita Thunder. He arguably was the Thunder's best defenseman that year. In the last four years, he was with the Indy Fuel, and he was probably their best defenseman uh, year in and year out with the Fuel. He is 6 feet, 210 pounds. Josh Wesley, the Grizzlies captain, was a plus three and had one assist in last night's game. Wesley, who was the son of former NHL All-Star and Stanley Cup champion Glenn Wesley, his uncle also played in the NHL in the 80s. He'll be wearing number 20. He's got good size at 6'3 and about 205 pounds. He'll be wearing number 20 for the Grizzlies. Kate Jensen makes his pro debut. He'll be a defenseman wearing number 23. And if you tuned into the preseason games, he was really a standout. And in particular, he was a standout in that Friday night game, Friday the 13th, when he had a goal that was scored 4-on-4 four four in the second period. He delivered a lot of hits. He was able to, he was really good on the penalty kill in particular. And I'm really curious to see what the Mount Royal product will look in his pro debut. He sat out last night. And Ryan Canas, which really has some tough decisions because he's got a lot of good defensemen on the roster. In fact, he's got more good defensemen than he does rosters. <laughs> lineup, little spots in the lineup. The game in and game out. So watch out for Kate Jensen. He'll be wearing number 23 making his pro debut. Kyle Mayhew, we mentioned him, uh, plus four last night. He's about as good as it gets in this league. He'll be wearing number six. And Brian Yu, the rookie out of Colorado College, made his pro debut last night. He played a pretty solid game. He'll be wearing number four. He's 5'11 and 178 pounds. So starting defensive pairing once again is Fairbrother and Underwood. We'll also see Teixeira, Josh Wesley, as well as Kay Jensen, Kyle Mayhew, and Brian Yu. Ten forwards for the Grizzlies tonight. The starting forwards, we mentioned Sandlin and Burke. They're both in the starting lineup. Sandlin had one assist, and he led the Grizzlies with six shots last night. Nathan Burke scored Utah's first goal. He was the Optum first goal of the game score. Make sure to make your pick for the Optum first goal of the game score. Last night it was Nathan Burke, and he's actually my pick this afternoon. And Kyle Betts will be in there as well. Betts had one goal and one assist, both of his points coming in the first period. And he was a plus two for the Grizzlies last night. And I talked with them uh, during media day earlier this week, and it was kind of interesting to talk about that experience he had in the AHL where it really improved his game, and he really looks like he's going to be a sharp player for the Grizzlies this year. Betts is wearing number 61. He's got an A on his sweater. Betts and Teixeira have the A's as they are the home alternate captains, sometimes called assistant captains. Josh Wesley is wearing the captain's C. 
Uh, the, the other, other Fords, we, men, we mentioned Sandlin, Betts, and Burke are the starters. You also see Dean Yakura in there, his 14th season as a pro, 38 years old. He won some face-offs last night in his Grizzlies debut. Big Messner wearing number 10. He'll be paired up with Fitz and Penner, I believe, tonight. Uh, Messner yeah, had a pretty good showing, and really, he's looked good all camp long. And it looks like he's a little bit faster this year than he was last season. Spent the offseason rehabbing an injury, but looks like McMessner is going to be a keeper this year. Dylan Fitz, obviously, he's a candidate to score first for Utah. It seems like he scores some big goals for Utah. He has over the last year and a half. He'll be wearing number 13. Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies Iron Man, of course, he's in there. It's his 146th consecutive game. Uh, all with the Grizzlies. Before that, spent some time in the SBHL with the Birmingham Bulls in the 2020-21 season. The Roosters in there, wearing number 27. He had three power play goals in the preseason, 44 points in 45 games in the regular year last year for Utah after being acquired in a trade with Fort Wayne. Colt Gallant is also going to be on that top line. It's going to be Gallant, Martel, and Cutler on the top forward line. Uh, Gallant was a plus one for the Grizzlies, displaying outstanding speed, the Western Michigan, Michigan product. He'll be wearing number 25. Brandon Cutler, one goal and one assist last night. He's over a point a game in his time with the Grizzlies, two plus seasons. And so that's the other forwards. We know we went through them pretty quickly. Yakura, Messner, Fitz is going to be in there, as well as Penner, and Cole Gallant, Martel, and Brandon Cutler. Grizzlies are going with 10 forwards tonight. Uh, Utah without Dakota Ravey for the second straight game due to an injury. And Cody Cron also out. That's the two that Jared Powers out of the line. That's the three forwards that are scratches for the Grizzlies. Let's see. It does look like Trent Miner's late scratch. It looked like they were going to go with Miner. And Garrett Metcalf, the Salt Lake City native, is actually going to be the starter for the Grizzlies tonight. So. It was considered, I, I believe, a late scratch. I don't know if it was a decision by Ryan Knaswich. I'm not sure if Miner got hurt in warm-ups, but it looks like Garrett Metcalf is going to be in there. He had a 39 save shutout on Friday the 13th, and Metcalf 6'5 and 190 pounds. He'll be in net. Johnny Fairbrother, Johnny Fairbrother is going to introduce the Maverick Center crowd as well as Mike Lunder. Well, let's get to the starters for the Tulsa Oilers. They are led by Rob Murray, who's in his seventh season as Tulsa head coach. Starting in net's going to be Tomas Sukanik. It'll be his professional debut. He played with the Tri-City Americans the last two years in the WHL. He is 6'2 and 182 pounds. Starting defensive pairing, Doogie Legrone, who played with the Grizzlies for one game in the 2018-2019 season. They always say once a Grizzly, always a Grizzly. Doogie Legrone, always a Grizzly in our hearts. He's wearing number five. He'll be paired up with Mike McKee, the seventh-year oiler. McKee, 6'5 and 240 pounds. Starting fours, Carson Folks. Calvin Watson and Kyle Krenkovic. I've been working on that all day. Hopefully by game time we'll get it down. Kyle Krenkovic, who really had an outstanding junior hockey career. Spent some time with the Seattle in the WHL. Also watch out for Carl Boudreau, who had one goal and one assist for Tulsa. He was solid last year with six goals and 24 assists. So watch out for Carl Boudreau wearing number 16. One key scratch for the Oilers, Eddie Matsushima, their leading scorer last year, is out of the lineup, and he's replaced by Jimmy Lodge, who's making his season debut. Lodge will be wearing number 21. When we come back, we'll face off here at Maverick Center. It's Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network.
It's a great game for hockey. It's two big standing points are on the line as Grizzlies are one to this season after a 5-3 opening night victory over the Tulsa Oilers. Garrett Metcalf will get the start in net. Earlier in the day, it looked like Trent Miner was going to be in there, but it's going to be Metcalf. Miner is the backup this afternoon. Garrett Metcalf had an outstanding preseason and a 39 safe shutout and a 6-0 victory over the Idaho Stillheads. It's his fourth season with the Grizz. Starting defensive pairing is Michael Underwood and Johnny Fairbrother. Starting forward, Sandlin, Burke, and Kyle Betts. Starting in net for Tulsa, making his pro debut is Tomas Sukanek. He is 6'2", 182 pounds. Duty Legrone and Mike McKeer, the starting defensive pairing for the Oilers. Carson Folk, Calvin Watson, and Kyle Frankovic are the starting forwards for Tulsa. As looks like they got a rubber duck with the supposed to be me, I guess, the rubber duck. Brought to us by Grizzlies fans. Two referees tonight, Trevor Wolford and David Lilly. The linesmen are Tyler Keston and Craig Peterson. Grizzlies in the white jerseys with white numbers and professional green trim. Tulsa for the second straight day, navy blue with red numbers and white trim. Oilers win the draw. They're skating from left to right as we're underway here at Maverick Center. As Tulsa throws it all the way in. Calvin Watson got challenged by Fairbrother. No ice. His Met Camp throws it to the far side. Underwood over towards Betts. This puck goes out towards center ice, it's taken back by the Oilers, Calvin Watson, skates back towards his own end, now he goes to the far side, chips across, bouncing it off of number 24, which is Nathan Burke. Burke played in Orlando uh, early last season, acquired a trade this week. As Tulsa skates in, Carson Folk drops off for Watson, right point, puck flips high into there, bouncing towards Metcalf, towards the slot, Metcalf trying to cover it up, but Fairbrother takes it for Utah, the former third round pick of Montreal. Kyle Betts ices the puck as he was looking for Burke, and the pass was behind him, and icing's on the Grizzlies as we get our first whistle, 45 seconds into the game, no one's taking a shot yet, and we're early on here in game two of the regular season. Everybody make your pick for the option first goal of the game. As Tank Bertuzzi will take the draw against Kyle Betts. Grizzlies get to make a line change here. As the draw left circle, Betts kicked down the face-off circle. Actually, he's not. Referees gave him a warning, I guess. Draw one by Utah. As Burke will lift it out of the zone, puck bounces at center ice, wobbles on its side. Grizzlies make a full line change for the first time this afternoon. Pass ahead to Dante Sheriff, who has a tap off his stick at center ice, and it goes past the Grizzlies' goal line behind the net. As Kyle Mayhew throws it towards Josh Wesley. Wesley, the Grizzlies captain this year, former Tulsa Oiler. He skates towards the near corner, deep in the Grizzlies zone. Backhand pass to Martell. Diagonal to the right side for Cutler. Cutler gets it. He steps over the line. He gets hit by Andy Carroll. Grizzlies look to center it to Martell, but the puck went over his stick. As Bertuzzi in the near corner throws it across to Jared Hilderman. Tall defenseman, 6'1", 207. Puck goes back towards the... Grizzly zone as Mayhew clears it back. Blue line to blue line pass. Martell looking for Cutler. Passes wide of the mark as Hilderman throws it across. Now it's a new try. Stante Sheriff gets it. He flies along the left wing. Sheriff skates towards a circle. Good poke check by Brian Hume. As Sheriff was trying to put a move on him. Pass ahead towards Cutler. He gets hit by Anthony Costantini, who played a physical game last night. As the Oilers at center ice drop it off. T-Bone Cod overskates it. Davis T-Bone Cod. Oilers get it back. They're in their own zone, skating from left to right. Tyler Polson's got good speed. He'll throw it to Constantini. Puck bounces off the stick of Dylan Fitz as McMessner challenges behind Tulsa's net. He gets poked away by Constantini. Puck goes over to the far side. Yoon gets hit by Polson. Action deep in the Oilers zone as Tulsa towards the near side. Constantini holds on to it. Now he gets out to center ice. Puck on its side. Wobbles. Cod gets it. Oilers have numbers. Four on three. Tulsa skates towards the left circle. Lefty shot. And it goes wide to the mark as the puck glides along the near wing boards. Tulsa at center ice. Backs it out into their own zone. Doogie Legrone, his second shift of the game as the Grizzlies make a full line change. Near wing pass to Farron, who gets towards center ice, looking for Bertuzzi. Passes wide to the mark as Ryan Sandlin across to Underwood. Moves ahead towards Betts. He wasn't looking. And the pass goes back towards Underwood as he's in his own zone. He'll feed it to the other circle for Kay Jensen. First shift for Jensen as a pro. As pass ahead to Nathan Burke. Jensen 6'3", 218. As Grizzlies get it towards Betts, Tulsa lifts it out of the zone. We get a whistle. It looks like the Grizzlies are offside. 17.09 left in the first. Good action here early on. And Kay Jensen, you can see the nerves right now as he's the Mount Royal product. And looks like he's going to be a pretty good one. He was a standout defenseman for the Grizzlies in the preseason. 
Betts will take the face off against, I think that's Davis T-Bone Cod, or actually Tag Bertuzzi. I need some new glasses. Grizzlies win the draw. Jensen tried to dump it in and fanned on it. This goes to Reggie Millette, number 42. He skates towards his left. And now down the middle, enters the zone, but Bertuzzi beat the puck in the zone, and the Oilers are offside as Bertuzzi was out there with Ryan Olson. Olson, the former Grizzly, also a former Kansas City Maverick. Kyle Krinkovich out there on the left wing, draws near the Grizzlies bench. Betts will take another face off. This time it's won by Carson Folk and o the Oilers. No score three minutes in as Tulsa dumps in from new tries. Far side, Krinkovic throws it to the high slot. Mike McKee with a lefty blast that goes wide. Puck goes towards Nathan Burke, and he'll lift it out to center ice. As Sandlin gets it poked away by Krinkovic. As the Oilers skate from left to right, McKee back to Doogie Legrone, who skates down the middle. Now back to McKee near the Oilers bench. He gets the center ice left wing and drives it around the boards. Puck goes back to the right side as Folk gets hit by Nathan Burke, who's been active so far. Underwood gets the puck. It seems like the same five guys for the Grizzlies here the first three and a half minutes. Ahead to Kyle Betts, who gets the center ice two on two. Betts enters the zone and dumps it in from just outside the Tulsa blue line. Burke chases after it. Betts comes off the ice, replaced by Dean Yakura. As Martel, two-on-two two scrum as Hilderman holds up Betts. Puck goes over to Utah as Wesley feeds over to the near side. Chased down by Legron, who will lift it out to center. Kyle Mayhew bats it down and gets it to Martel. He skates down the middle. He enters the zone. Right wing pass. Grizzlies gather it. Cutler bounces it off as Sheriff gets it back and rolls it along the wall. Cut off by Yakura behind the goal line. Back to Cutler far side. He spins it around. Martel chases after it. He collides with Hilderman. Martel goes down, and the puck goes back to Tulsa. They lift it out to center ice. It goes over the head of Mayhew. As the puck kind of skips towards Metcalf, Josh Wesley chases after it. He gets it and stations himself behind the Salt Lake City native. Four and a half minutes in, still no scores. Metcalf starting tonight with Miner starting last night, gaining the victory, stopping 32 of 35. Ed DePenner, tap top is stick. Now left wing, fits with a shot that goes wide. Fits with a crafty righty shot, but it just went wide glove side. Now three on three, toll centers, left wing, lefty shot. Kick saved by Metcalf. That was taken by Bertuzzi. Now up top, Tulsa gets it. As they get it to Constantini on the right side, he'll fire a shot, and Metcalf gloves it about shoulder high and holds on to it as we get a whistle with 15.06 left in the first. Carl Bedrea was over there on the left point. He had a goal and an assist in last night's game. Grizzlies really dominated five on five in last night. Not last night's 5-3 victory, outscoring the Oilers 3-0 in five on five situations. Both teams had a shorthanded goal last night. Tulsa two power play goals. Grizzlies had one. So no score. Tulsa in the offensive zone. They win the face off. Barron with a righty shot that goes high. As collision over to the far side involving Carl Budrea and Dylan Fitz. Budrea feeds it to the far circle. Yoon gets it. Taps out to neutralize. Now Budrea from neutralize with a blast. And Metcalf makes a blocker save. Grizzlies start the attack from right to left. As Yoon over to Fitz. Goes back to Yoon. Still in the Grizzlies zone. Now he moves ahead to neutralize for Penner. He tried to feed Messner, but it's picked off by Tulsa. Farron enters the zone, gets to Polson, right wing, righty shot, kick saved by Metcalf. Puck goes back over to the left side. Now another shot, lefty blast, and Metcalf makes a save, and he holds on with 14.33 left in the first. That last shot was taken by Andy Carroll, who's wearing number 14 for the Oilers, 6'1 and 187 pounds. A lot of action early on. You could tell Tulsa really offensively is being aggressive. It seems like more action in the Grizzlies zone than over towards... Tomas Sukanik making his pro debut. You know the Oilers would like to have him settle in easily to this game. So there's probably a lot of nerves there. Betts will take the draw against Tag Bertuzzi, the former Norfolk Admiral, who was acquired by Tulsa late last season in a trade. And the draw won by Tulsa. They throw, throw it up top for Hilderman, left point. He feeds it back to the corner, bounced off a body. And that's Ryan Olson. That's actually Jimmy Lodge, number 21, about similar size to Olson. As the Oilers throw it to the corner, hit a stanchion, running over and getting it. It's Johnny Fairbrother. He moves it ahead to Betts at neutralize. He throws the center ice, picked off by the Oilers, who have been very active so far. Millette trying to feed Bertuzzi, cutting in front of the net, and Burke picks it off. Nathan Burke back to Fairbrother, left wing, he crosses center ice. Fairbrother gets it taken away by Reggie Millette. He races after, right side, he gets it. He gets knocked down by Kyle Betts. Very physical play. Centering pass is picked off by Utah. Sandlin will carry it out of the zone. He doesn't have numbers, so he'll just dump in as Grizzlies make a line change behind him. Six minutes in, still no score. Tulsa three shots. Grizzlies yet to take one. Tulsa up ahead looking for Watson. Glanced off his skate and glides towards Metcalf, who will feed it to the far corner. 
Cutler throws it from one side to the other. Near side, Legron chases after it. He gets hit by Wesley. Wesley got more glass than he did Legron. High slot, Mike McKee, lefty shot goes wide off the boards intentionally. And Krenkovic couldn't reach it. McKee gets it back. He'll spin it towards the near point as Martel clears it out to center. Good job by Jordan Martel winning a one-on-one -on -one battle with Legron. Now left side, Mike McKee, lefty shot goes high off the glass, stays in play. Right point, Legron will throw it behind Utah's net as it glides towards the far corner. As Mayhew gets pushed by Krenkovic, both guys not big, but they're very tough. Now Tulsa gets it left side to try to fire a shot, and cutting in front's Cutler as Legron over towards Krenkovic, wearing number 37. Back to Carson Folks, number 19, ahead to the left point. Tulsa gets it, righty shot, saved by Metcalf. And Garrett holds on as the shot was taken from the left circle. Boy, Tulsa's really dominated the shot count and the action so far. The last shot was taken by Anthony Costantini, but still no score as Garrett Metcalf has stopped all five he has seen. 12.55 left in the first period. Still no score on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. much better than yesterday. Still no score, Grizzlies and the Oilers. Oy, Tulsa's really dominated the action so far offensively. They've got at least four shots on Garrett Metcalf. Utah needs to get some offense his own time here. They show the replay of Kyle Betts' hit on Reggie Millette. But I think the Oilers are going to be a much improved team last year. And really the impressive thing is when Utah had a 4-1 lead, I, it, Tulsa just kept battling. They didn't concede until the very end. And you know with Rob Murray, the Tulsa head coach, are always going to put together a good effort. T-Bone Cod will take the draw against Utah's Tyler Penner. And the Ironman wins the draw as, as Brian Yoon will tap it off the glass. It goes out of play as it ends up in section, I think, 125. No delay of game as it bounced off the glass. As Brian Yoon talking things over with Keone Teixeira, the six-year pro. Draws going to stay in the far circle of the Grizzlies zone. Tulsa moving from left to right here in the first period. Grizzlies from right to left. Drop one by Tulsa as they feed it to the far corner. Yoon chases after. He collides with Cod. We get a whistle. And Garrett Metcalf's neck looks like it got dislodged. And that was spotted by one of the two referees tonight. So they put the net back in place. Looked like that hole was just a little bit wider than it is some days. As Metcalf will skate towards the near circle. Kind of let that lactic acid build up and just kind of move around a little bit. Earlier in the day, I was told that Trent Miner was going to get the start. But it looks like Metcalf is in net for Utah. Miner is the backup in case something happens to Metcalf. As Utah wins the draw, Yoon throws to the left side. Couldn't clear it out. We get a whistle and a hand pass is called. As there's about four or five bodies out in front in the... Puck ended up about waist high. Draw is going to be near the Grizzlies bench. Ryan Kanaswich, the third-year head coach, looking things on with new assistant coach Christian Horn. Horn's got one hand on his chin, kind of looking like he's in deep in thought. As Tulsa wins the faceoff, they get to center ice, and dumping it in is Carl Budrea, who might have been Tulsa's best player last night. Over towards the near side. Messner couldn't get it, but goes to Costantini. He'll fire a shot that bounces off a of penner and rolls towards Metcalf, who covers it up near the near side goal line, uh, just outside the crease. As once again, action. I think if you're a Tulsa fan, you have to be happy that the action's all the way in the Grizzlies zone for the majority of it. And for Utah, they've got to find a way to win some faceoffs and see if they can get some things going. 12:28 left in the first period. Tag Bertuzzi will take the draw against Kyle Betts. Last of a two-game series, these teams will meet ten times during the regular season. As a draw won by Utah, as Fairbrother near corner lifts it high into the air, chasing after it, Sandal, and with good speed, but Hilderman gets there first. Jared Hilderman skates towards the far side, now moves ahead to Sheriff, still in the Oilers zone. Now they get to center ice, as Hilderman left wing, fake dumping it in. He'll skate towards the blue line, now he'll dump it in, as Metcalf behind his net will chip it towards Sandal in the far corner. Turnover. Brian Olsen, righty shot, saved by Metcalf. As Grizzlies trying to clear it out, Olsen picked it off in the slot, took a righty shot, but Metcalf was able to make the save. Brian Olsen was overseas last year. Every, every time I've seen him, he's been pretty good. Good size at 6'2", 195 pounds. 
a couple years ago, he was with Kansas City in the 2021-22 season. He had nine goals and four assists in 21 games. Also spent 17 games in the AHL that year with Stockton. As a draw to the far circle is won by the Grizzlies, still in their own zone. As Kate Jensen moves ahead, Jensen got spun around as Bertuzzi throws it towards the corner. Big hit delivered by Jensen. Grizzly, Grizzlies have it as Tulsa turned it over. Betts left side, crosses center. Sandlin chasing after it as he collides with Andy Carroll. As it is Sandlin tried to center to hit the side of the net. As Tulsa's Jimmy Lodge tried to lift it and couldn't clear it out. Jensen spins it back to the corner. Carroll skates over there to get it. As Andy Carroll will tap it off the near glass, it flies into the Grizzly zone. Jensen tries to clear it out, it hit off Olsen. Carroll right side shot, and it's blocked by Jensen. He did that a lot in the preseason. As Kyle Betts gets to center ice, he'll lightly tap it in as the Grizzlies make a full line change. 11-23 and counting left in the first. Still no score. Tulsa with five shots. Grizzlies have yet to take one. Oilers race to center ice with speed. Carson Folk drives it around the wall, goes to the near side. As Calvin Watson spins it back to the far side. As Krenkovic skates towards the left point. Now chip it back to the corner that he vacated. Make you lose it. Krenkovic across to Legron. Slot righty shot and it's blocked by, Carrot, by Cutler. Cutler with a blocked shot. He did that a lot last night. Tried to clear it out. Krenkovic looked like he kept it in, but no. Delayed offside. Mayhew will get the puck. He'll station behind Metcalf. Now he feeds it to the far side. As Grizzlies. Gallant throws to Martel. The Rooster skates down the middle. Bears off to the right. He'll take a righty shot. Saved by Sukanik. And that's the first save by Tomas Sukanik as a pro. As Martel got to neutralize, got over the offensive line, just veered off to the right and found himself a good look from the right side. All three goals Martel scored in the preseason were from the left side, but it doesn't really matter. Martel's the guy that can score from the left side as well as the right. Penner will take the face off. 10.42 left in the first. Still no score. As the draw, won by the Oilers. At this time of the game yesterday, we'd already had three goals. Two by Utah, one by Tulsa. As Penner gets it neutralized, Millette takes it away. He drops it off as the Oilers get towards the middle. Olsen with a righty shot, saved by Metcalf. Best save that Garrett's made so far. As Lodge around the wall, Olsen chases after it. So does Wesley. Wesley collides with Olsen. Lodge can play it as it goes to Messner in the near corner. As Olsen delivers a hit on Messner, puck goes towards the right side. Two on two battle. A third Grizzly joins the play. Costantini battles with Messner. Both guys were number 10. Grizzlies come out of it with the puck as Fitz at the Utah blue line lifts it in. Chasing after it's Messner. No icing as Messner. Costantini gets around him and gets the puck. He'll move it ahead to Millette. Across to Jimmy Lodge. Right wing pass to Cod. Cod's the right side. Don't join. Gains the line. Gets around Texera. Sorry, pass. Shot. Saved by Metcalf. Boy, the puck was in the corner. They centered it to Boudreaux. And Garrett Metcalf makes a save. Good stop by Garrett. That was one of those passes that got right into the crease. There wasn't much of a shooting angle. But the good thing for Metcalf is there wasn't a second chance there. As he was able to gobble it up. Davis T-Bone Cod with an impressive pass there towards Boudreaux. As Texera and Hume were looking on. I gotta say, Cod has probably looked like one of Tulsa's best forwards. Seven shots for the Oilers, one for the Grizzlies. Still no score halfway through the first period. Draws gonna be in the near circle. Cod will take it against Betts. Betts wins it cleanly as Texera throws to Yoon on the far side. As Tulsa takes it away, Poulsen over to the left side. As the Oilers look like they're playing like the Edmonton Oilers of the 1980s, but they haven't scored a goal yet. As Sandlin. Will chip it around Utah's net. Texera gets it near side. He'll throw it to center ice looking for Burke. It goes past him. Did he get a piece of it? Yes, says the linesman. No icing. As Sukanik will give way towards Boudreaux, who will tap it off the near glass with velocity. Tulsa gets it three on three. As Ferrin skates towards the right side. Centering pass. Shot. And it goes wide as Cod took the shot. Looked like Metcalf tapped it with his glove. As Burke gets to center ice, he'll lift it all the way out of play off the protective netting. John's going to come to center ice. We got 9.09 left in the first period. We've been skating five on five this entire time. Both teams make a line change. Ryan Kanasiewicz talking things over with Christian Horn. Thing is, it's just outside of that Martel shot, um, it's really been Tulsa kind of dominating the offensive advantage, but it's still scoreless. Draw it center ice, won by the Grizzlies. Bear Brother skates towards the near circle, moves it ahead, looking for Cutler. It's picked off by Bertuzzi. As Tulsa gets it, Hilderman towards Bertuzzi. As he'll carry it into the zone. Over to Sheriff, try to get it back to Bertuzzi. Pass goes wide. Bertuzzi skates to the corner to get it. Now it's the left point. Pass off of Boudreaux's skate. As it exits the zone, Boudreaux will dump it back in as Tulsa retreats. As 
Fairbrother gets it wearing number three as he'll skate along the near side. Fairbrother gets to the Utah blue line, moves it to Cutler, who taps it in as chasing after it's Gallant. Hilderman gets there first as Ryan Olson gets back checked by Underwood. Bertuzzi clears it out, and it's going to be icing on the Oilers. As we have stopped play with 8.32. Left in the first. The fans still filing in here for this 310 start. Don't forget, we got a big one this weekend. AFCU Friday for the first time all year is going to be on Friday night with a AFCU Friday. Tickets start just $8 when you pay using your America First Credit Union debit or credit card to the Maverick Center box office. Steelheads will also be here on Saturday night. Two games set. Face off both evenings will be at 7 o'clock. Your tickets to UtahGrizzlies.com. Draw on the far side, one by Tulsa, as Bertuzzi won it against Yakura. As right side, Dylan Fitz throws it back to the corner. Hilderman gets it. Fitz tried to lift his stick, but Hilderman gets the puck, skates around Tulsa's net, gets over to Olsen at the Tulsa blue line. Oilers skating from left to right, Grizzlies right to left. As goes back to Fairbrother, who moves it ahead. Dylan Fitz to center ice, left wing, gets the puck. He chases after it, trying to get to Messner, passes wide of the mark. Tulsa across the center ice. Calvin Watson enters the zone. He skates towards the right circle, takes a shot. And it's blocked by Mayhew. Grizzlies get it with Josh Wesley, left side. He gets back checked, but Wesley keeps the puck. He's a strong guy. He skates into the zone with speed and momentum. Veers off to the left. Near side, Watson, Wesley, backhand shot, saved by Sukanik. As it's really a play made all his own by Josh Wesley. Impressive looking play. Got a shot on Sukanik. As Tulsa ices the puck with 7.45 left in the first. Well, on both occasions with the two shots Utah has, they really carried it into the zone themselves. It wasn't really a pass that got there. Martell earlier and then Josh Wesley there kind of going coast to coast, using his momentum starting on the right side and veering off to the left. 7-2 to two shot count, lead for Tulsa, still no scores. The Oilers win the faceoff, skating from left to right as they move it ahead. Goes to Carson Folks, left wing pass to Watson. Tulsa in the offensive zone as Wesley delivers a hit on Watson. As now it goes to Sandlin, two on two. Make it three on two. Sandlin enters from the right side, drops off for Burke. He skates down the middle. Burke over to Betts. One timer saved by Sukanik. What a stop by the Tulsa goaltender as Burke skated down the middle, fed it to the right side for Betts. But Betts was all alone, and Tomas Sukanik made an impressive save. Looks like that forward line, even though they haven't worked together all that much, has got good chemistry. Sandlin to Burke in the slot, just kind of slid it to his right for Betts, and Sukanik just somehow was able to kick the leg out and make the save. Good stop by Tulsa's netminder. 7.24 left in the first. Still no score. As Betts wins the faceoff over to Sandlin. Righty shot is blocked by the glove of Sukanik. Action in the far corner. Grizzlies in the offensive zone. As Tulsa gets it, they throw it across. Millette couldn't reach it. He chases after it. Neutralized. Teixeira dumps it back in for Utah. Tulsa still in control. McKee moves ahead to Bertuzzi. Trying to get towards Jimmy Lodge. He couldn't reach it. No icing. As Metcalf will throw it to the near side. Bertuzzi cuts it off. He'll feed it back towards the corner. Yoon behind Utah's net. We'll get to Gallant. who gets it to center ice. Big collision between Millette and Gallant. As Tulsa gathers the puck. Bertuzzi gets back checked. It goes to Jimmy Lodge at center ice. He'll backhand it in. As Tulsa makes a line change. 6.42 and counting left in the first. Still no score. Teixeira over to Jensen who gets hit by Cod. Cod throws it up top as Tulsa. We get a whistle. And looks like Tulsa's caught with too many men. Yeah, they had six. And they had six for a good five or six seconds. And eventually the official spotted it. Too many men on the ice for the Oilers. Or is it the Grizzlies? It's going to be the Oilers. Utah goes on the power play as Tyler Polson will represent the Oilers in the box. That doesn't mean he was the guilty extra man. He's just the one representing him in the penalty box. So the first power play of the game goes to the Grizzlies. 6.34 left in the first. Cutler will take the dry. He's got Fitz to his left and Gallant to his right. Up top is Martell and Wesley. As a draw, one by Utah, literally kicked towards Wesley. That's the left side for Martell. Veer off into the corner near side. Martell up top for Wesley. Wesley gets around a skater. He gets pushed by Farron, but keeps the puck. Now he gets to Martell. Martell across to Cutler, right side. He'll take a lefty shot. Kick saved by Sukanik. Rebound goes to the left point. Taken by Martell, who skates towards his right. But the puck glides off his stick and exits his zone. As Martell gets it back, he'll skate into the Grizzly zone, carrying the puck to center ice. Martell gets back checked. Cod will throw it towards Hilderman. 
Now ahead towards Michael Farron. He couldn't reach it at center ice, and he'll come off the ice. The Oilers make a line change. Six minutes and counting left in the first as Utah's up to five shots after Tulsa had taken the first five or six in the game. As Grizzlies enter the zone, Cutler skates towards the left circle. Lefty shot saved by Sukanik, and the rebound goes out to the right corner. As Cutler gets to Fitz, he bounces off the skate of an Oiler. It goes past the goal line near side. As Doogie Legron moves it towards Watson, who couldn't get it. As Wesley to Martell, Grizzlies re enter the zone. As Martell tried to drop it off for Wesley, but he was exiting for a change. As goes over to the right side, shot saved by Metcalf. And he holds on as Kyle Krenkovic skated along the right wing, got to the circle, fired a shot, but Metcalf gathered it and he bobbled it for a second, but he was able to cover up. And we get a whistle with 52 seconds left in the Utah power play. 526 left in the first. Grizzlies talk things over. Cod will take the draw against Kyle Betts, who's played a a lot of minutes here in the first period. As a drop, one by, kind of stays the circle. Grizzlies eventually win it, as Mayhew will carry it out of the zone himself. Grizzlies in the power play, gets the center ice with speed. Now he continues to skate down the middle, now he's in the zone, throws to the right side, Sandalone with a shot that's blocked. Now it goes to Fairbrother, left point. He'll skate towards his right, Fairbrother near the blue line. As now he chipped it across, looking for Betts. Battle in the slot, taken by Tulsa. And they'll backhand it out of the zone. Cod tried to reach it center ice and couldn't. Oilers make a line change. Grizzlies gather it. 20 seconds left in the power plays. Fairbrother skates down the middle. He's got good speed. He gets the center ice, drops it off for Mayhew. Now to Betts on the right side. He'll throw it to the right for Sandlin, who enters the zone. Betts trying to get back to Sandlin. Tulsa anticipated it. Ryan Olsen chasing to the left side. He gets it. Backhand shot saved by Metcalf as Olsen crashes in the boards. As we get a whistle of 4.36 left in the first. Two seconds left in the power play. As Tulsa shorthanded had two good looks. Krenkovic on the right side, and then Ryan Olsen and Kyle Mayhew in a foot race. Olsen got to the puck first, left side, which is impressive considering he's probably got a lot of pounds and a lot of inches on Mayhew. But got their first fire to backhand shot, and Metcalf made the save. 4.36 left in the first, still no score. As the draw won by Brian Union, the Grizzlies. Tulsa's back at full strength. Pulse will skate towards the bench. Grizzlies get it skating from right to left as Texera head towards Messner. He gets spun around. Uh, it was tipped at center ice, no icing. As Tulsa throws to the near side, Texera gets it back to the corner. The only guy there is Andy Karoff. Tulsa trying to skate along the near wing boards. He gets cut off by Yakura. As Penner to Messner. Messner dances around. He'll feed it up top for Texera. Left point. Bobbles the puck. Now Tulsa pokes it away. Good job by Ryan Olsen. Dante Sheriff. Two on three. Skates towards the left side. Fakes to Olsen. Now tapping off the boards for Olsen. Who's to the far side. Olsen around the net. As he's battling with Yakura. Centering pass out in front. Goes wide. Good idea by Olsen. As Sheriff on the left side. Takes a righty shot. And it's blocked out in front. As Olsen gets it. Throws to Bertuzzi. He couldn't handle it. As Messner gets it near side. He'll move it out of the zone. But Penner couldn't get it. As Boudreaux around the wall, wraps it around. Try, Sheriff tried to cut it off and couldn't. Grizzlies will make a full line change. The puck spins along the wall. It's cut off by Sukanik behind the net. As Tulsa, Carl Boudreaux, diagonal pass connects. Carson Folk over to Watson. He's in the right point. They trying to get it to the Sheriff. Puck bounced off the stick. Sheriff tries to center it. Puck glides on its side towards the near boards. Costantini throws it across to Sheriff. 3.20 left in the first as Sheriff skates towards his right. He's now towards the right circle. Righty shot is blocked. Sheriff tried to get the rebound but skated over the puck as Jensen lifts it out to center ice. Gloved and dropped by Boudreaux. Now to Sheriff who backhands it in as Jensen chases after it. Far corner of the Grizzly zone. Cutler in a one-on-one -on -one battle in the corner as an oiler goes down. No call. Puck goes over to Michael Underwood behind Utah's net as he communicates with Metcalf. Underwood glides it towards the near corner for Jensen who lifts it. High into the air, gloved and dropped by Legron, who gets hit by Cutler. Sandlin bobbles the puck, and Euler goes down. Sandlin, left side. Oh, he tried to center it, but couldn't. He still has a puck. He feeds up top for Mayhew, bobbles it. Goes to Calvin Watson, one on three. Watson crosses the center ice. He'll skate towards the right circle. He'll take a righty shot, and it goes wide. As Carson Folk, left side, trying to throw it back. Bouncing puck is crowded by Josh Wesley, who slides it to Nathan Burke, number 24. As Burke, in his second game in a Grizzlies uniform, gets the center ice left wing. He dumps it in. As Burke gets hit by the other, number 24, Mike McKee. As Sukanik feeds it to the far side, 2.15 and counting left in the first, still no score. The Oilers, 10-7 shot advantage as T-Bone Cod skates down the middle, but Michael Farron entered the zone before Cod. The problem is Cod had the puck and the Oilers are offside. 
210 left in the first. There's a timeout on the ice. We'll take one as well. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Two ten left in the first, still no score. You know the hockey term standing on his head, it feels like Garrett Metcalf has done that here in the first period. As Trent Miner, the backup this evening. Third goalie is Dante Gianuzzi, who played in the Grizzlies' second preseason game eight days ago. Draws at neutral ice after Tulsa was called for offside. 10 to 7 shot edge. Looks like Grizzlies have had a few though lately. Tulsa had two good shorthanded looks, one by Krinkovic and the other by Ryan Olson. Drought center ice is won by the Oilers. As Tolson to the left wing, wraps it around the wall, kind of slowly, Metcalf cuts it off behind the net, gets to Mayhew on the near side. Mayhew will bounce it towards Fitz. Puck, wob Puck wobbles on its side, goes over to Tolson, who's back in their own end. As Boudreaux throws the center ice, picked off by Josh Wesley, the Grizzlies captain. He gets blasted near the Oilers bench, but Wesley keeps his feet. As Farron gets physical with Wesley, Wesley holds his ground. Yakura dumps it in as he gets hit by Polson. Grizzlies make a line change. One minute, 35 seconds left in the first, still no score. As the Oilers skate from left to right, Hilderman back behind his net, very patient. Tyler Penner will now retreat to neutralize. Fans want some action. Hilderman says, here you go. He'll get it to Cod on the right side. He gets around two skaters. Cod with good speed. Over to Polson, right side, righty shot. Kick save by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Cole Gallant. As Gallant gets to center ice, he'll dump it in. Costantini gets after it. Gallant left his feet. Gallant behind Utah's net. Battles with Boudreaux. Now Tulsa gathers it, battling with Penner. And they get it to Carson Folk, does the Oilers. Two on three. He'll carry it out to center ice. He collides with Martel, pushes Folk in the back. And the Oilers get to Boudreaux back in the Oilers' zone. Now ahead looking for Folk. He couldn't reach it. Icing is on the Oilers. 51 seconds left in the first period. First intermission will recap the, the first frame and talk with Tim Broussard to get his thoughts on things. We'll also go over some scores from around the world of sports. Faceoff's going to be in the near circle. Second of seven straight home games for the Grizzlies to start the regular year. Tulsa, the Idaho Steelheads will be in town for a two-game set beginning on Friday night at a 7-10. Draws the near side, Betts will take it, and he wins it. Fair brother across to Underwood, now to Burke. It taps off his stick as Reggie Millette moves it ahead. Tolson with a breakaway. Carson Folk left side shot, kick save by Metcalf. Millette chases after it, right side, righty shot, save by Metcalf again. Boy, Carson Folk got behind the Grizzlies defense, had a really good look from the left side. A Grizzly player was chasing him, so he didn't really have time to put a move on. He went low on Metcalf, who made a nice kick save. And the puck went to the right wing boards. Millette had a look from near the boards on the near side, and Metcalf was able to make that save as well. Folk will take the draw against Kyle Betts. Make sure to follow the Grizzlies on Facebook, Instagram, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. I'm on X at Tyson on Sports. Off the draw, Jimmy Lodge with a shot, and it's blocked by Nathan Burke as Sandlin. will throw it back to Underwood. Half a minute left in the first period. Outlet pass to center is picked off. As Tulsa skates toward down the middle. Lefty shot. Kick save by Metcalf. Folk centers it over to Lodge. Shot. It's blocked by Underwood. As the Oilers over to the left side across to Hilderman. Right point. The far righty shot. I think it redirected and goes wide. Stays in play as Lodge tried to redirect it from out in front. Sandlin gets held up by an Oiler. Lodge joins the play. As Sandlin over to the far side to Underwood behind Utah's net. And Underwood. Three seconds left, will fire it towards Sukanik, who makes a stop in front of the crease, and that does it for 20 minutes here at Maverick Center. And we, we're scoreless. Tulsa 14 shots to the Grizzlies eight. And how about Garrett Metcalf? Just an outstanding first period. Not only did Tulsa get 14 shots, but it felt like a lot of grade A type of opportunities. 
Both teams head to the locker room as we're deadlocked with no score. When we come back, we will recap the first period and go over some scores from around the world of sports, and then we'll talk with Tim Broussard and get his thoughts on things. No score here in the second of a two-game set with Utah winning 5-3 to three last night. We'll come back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. First intermission here at Maverick Center. No score. Tulsa outshot Utah 13 to 8 in the first 20 minutes. Ryan Sandlin and Brandon Cutler each had two shots. One shot each for Josh Wesley, Jordan Martell, Michael Underwood, and Kyle Betts. Looks like of the eight shots, there were quite a few, maybe four or five really good looks on Tomas Sukanik. It looks like he's going to be a pretty good prospect. He's a young guy. Um, he is only, well, I think, 21, maybe 22 years old, wearing number 39. When Sukanik was born in 2003, that might make a lot of people feel old. He's only 20 years old, played with the Tri-City Americans. He's currently on an AHL contract with the San Diego Ghouls. Um, and Sukanik really looked good in his first period as a pro, 6'2", 180 pounds. Uh, for Metcalf, boy, he was absolutely outstanding, following up a strong preseason. That included a 39 safe shutout, and Garrett Metcalf looks about as good as he ever has. And this is fourth season with the Grizzlies, and the Salt Lake City native really looked strong in this first period. Um, in 34 games with Utah through the end of last season, he's got a record of 15, 11, and 2, with a 9.04 save percentage and 3.09 goals against average. Um, right now, Metcalf's on an AHL deal with the Colorado Eagles, and that probably means he's going to get a little bit more playing time this year, and he certainly earned it. And if he's, if really, you talk about four periods here for the Grizzlies so far this regular season, the goaltending has been solid all four periods. The Grizzlies have yet to give up a five on five goal so far in the regular season. Knock on wood, of course. Two other games in the league. We'll talk with Tim Broussard here in a couple minutes. In overtime, Newfoundland goes to 3-0 this season. They defeat Reading 2-1. Trois-Rivières over Worcester, 4-1 the final score there. Uh, I think Bryson Martin, yeah, the former Grizzly, Bryson Martin is one of Trois-Rivières' defensemen. He was with the Grizzlies last season. Um, Quinn Ryan, former Grizzly forward, went scoreless and was a minus one. He was one of Worcester's best forwards last season. And as Trois Rivière outshot Worcester 36 to 31, and Trois Rivière with a 4-1 victory over Worcester. As the, right now, this is the only game going on in the league, and we want to give a shout out to the people watching on Facebook. As it looks like you can watch this game for free, uh, just go to the ECHL social media channels and tune into the Grizzlies game here against the Oilers. As it looks like one game every week is going to be available on the ECHL. Yeah, Facebook page, you know, it looks like it's you're gonna get a game each week And it looks like the Grizzlies and Oilers are that game this week And we'll talk with Tim Broussard here in a couple minutes But of course, I'm curious to see what's happening in week seven in the National Football League Games have gone final Giants defeat the commanders 14 to 7 Falcons over the Buccaneers 16 13 as Atlanta kicked a 51 yard field goal at the end how about the Patriots? They defeat the Bills 29-25 to as Mike Gesicki uh, got a touchdown catch from Matt Jones late in regulation there. In an outstanding high-scoring game, the Browns defeat the Colts 39-38. Bears are a 30-12 to winner over the Las Vegas Raiders. That game played in Chicago. 
Boy, the Ravens. They had a day, and Detroit really had a bad one. Ravens 38, Lions 6. In fact, that game is so bad, that was the one we got locally. Third quarter, you got the message from Kurt Menefee back in the studio that we'll send you to a more competitive game. Uh, Ravens really had their way with Detroit, 38-6 to the final there. Games in progress. Randy Connolly, big Chiefs fan, decided to come to the Grizzlies game tonight. Um, at the half, Chiefs lead the Chargers 24-17. At halftime, Broncos lead the Packers 9-0. Early third quarter, Steelers have a 10-9 lead over the L.A. Rams. And just going to halftime, Seahawks lead the Cardinals 14-10. Two games in the NHL today. First intermission, Red Wings lead the Flames 2-0. And at 6.30, the Bruins, who are 4-0 this season, take on the 1-3 Anaheim Ducks. When we come back in 45 seconds, we'll talk with Timber Sard and get his thoughts on what he saw in the first period and what do the Grizzlies need to do in the second frame to generate some more offensive chances. And Garrett Metcalf was outstanding. What did Timber Sard see about Garrett Metcalf's performance here in the first period? The score after one, well, there is none. Scoreless here in, at Maverick Center on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. No score here at Maverick Center. First intermission as we're grooving on a Sunday afternoon. I'm Tyce Whiting here with Tim Broussard. Well, really the big reason why we're scoreless is Garrett Metcalf. who capped off an impressive preseason with, I think, an absolutely outstanding first period. Maybe the best I've ever seen Garrett Metcalf look, and that's that's saying something because when he's got his A game on, he can be pretty dominant. And, and we needed that the way that Tulsa was not just generating shots but some high-quality chances, you know, that... It just seemed like they just keep coming and coming and thank heavens we had Garrett on the backdrop Surprising though because earlier in the day I, I was told that minor was gonna get the start and gosh, I thought it was minor that came out first I was looking to see if it was Sukanic and I thought it was my uh, I'm not sure uh, But uh, Metcalf gets a start and he's been outstanding Boy Tulsa Offense's own time. It seems like I don't know what the exact number is, but they had it quite a bit more than Utah in that first frame. I, I, and that was on my notes here, the time of offensive possession from Tulsa. It just tilted ice. Everything through the neutral zones when we were trying to break out seemed to come right back in against us. And I, I don't know what it was. We just couldn't get past that. Uh, that I called it neutral zone congestion. We needed a sponsor, some type of medicine to clear up the neutral zone <laughs> neutral zone congestion to get us through that because because right now it's not working. We'll find a sponsor. We'll find a sponsor. Uh, it seemed like the Grizzlies, when they were able to get in the offensive zone, it was them carried in themselves. You know, Martel from neutral ice getting a shot, you know, where he kind of created it on his own. And Josh Wesley going coast to coast, starting from the right side, and a really strong skater. It seemed like it takes a lot for him to lose a puck. Getting to center ice, bearing off to the left, and having a pretty good backhand shot of his own. It seemed like that's where the Grizzlies were able to find some offensive zone time there in the first period. And there was that really good look with that. That's Sandlin and Burke line that Sukanic made a nice save on. Right, and that shows you the adjustments that Tulsa made from last night in the fact of last night we could move it from our defense to our offense uh, you know, unimpeded, no problems. Today they're stepping up in the passing lanes and not just being in the passing lane, but they're closing it off and, and giving it nowhere else to go. So our puck carriers having to carry it from blue line to blue line and then into the offensive zone. Considering that Tulsa had some success on the power play in last night's game, it's probably good that you know, the Grizzlies weren't on the penalty kill in the first period. They had one power play and well, you know, there was one or two good looks for the Grizzlies, but it looked like Tulsa had a couple of the good looks shorthanded on the back end. Yeah, they, Tulsa didn't need the power play to generate high quality chances. You know, the the one with Ryan Olsen over here on his little breakaway, he ended up going into the boards, but gets back up and he does a backhand pass to assaults a guy cutting down the middle. And, you know, uh, everybody's got their hands full. I know Brian Yoon is doing what he can and really impressed with Mayhew, but I'm, I, it just seems like we're about a step behind on everything. 
I mean, that one four, it seemed like Kyle Betts played, what, 15 minutes in that first period? It seemed like he was out there all the time with Sandlin and Burke. I'm still trying to get a read on Sandlin and Burke, but it just seems like they're pretty solid players all around. Not necessarily the fastest, but they're just pretty smooth out there. Well, Sandlin seems to be finding lanes. I know he's one of our two players with two shots, so he, he's seeing something out there and getting, yeah, he and getting the open. with six shots last night. That, that would make sense. So he's seeing the lanes. He's able to create a little bit of time and space, but there's just not much right there to be taken right now. Best look the Grizzlies had was really that three on two, maybe three on three, where it was like Sandlin to, to Burke and then Burke to Betts on the right side. I mean. There was not a great shooting angle there as he was pretty close to the goal line and pretty close to the net, but Sukanik, I don't know how he was able to corral it and not allow, allow a rebound back to Betts. Yeah, for those who are on Flow Sports, it's at the 724 mark where Betts shot on uh, Sukanik in that leg save. He kind of did this little spin as he's trying to come out to cover the puck and just did awesome. I, the ground that he was covering was so quick has really surprised me. I think it surprised Betts as well. Looks like Sukanik's a pretty solid goaltender. Had two years in the WHL. Where can the Grizzlies get one on this guy? Because it seems like he's pretty solid. It, he's really quick in the stand-up position, and it was fun to watch him in the in the warm-ups, and it's translating over, unfortunately, from our point of view, from in, in gameplay. But, you know, the, the longer you can stay in that stand-up and, and hold that challenge, it leaves your explosive ability to be that last second, last gasp. Okay, now I've got... I've got all this momentum and and, uh, and positions where I can lunge out. My legs are all intact, and I can and I can I can move up my legs. And and uh, I, I think we're going to need a little bit more east to west because everything up top, if he's in that stationary position and he stays in that stand up, he's really comfortable there. We're going to have to get him a little bit more uncomfortable. What do you think the mood is in the locker room for the Grizzlies? Is this one where it's like, hey, we got to stay the course. We're scoreless. You know, just win the next 40 minutes. Or is this a we're going to rearrange some furniture kind of intermission where we got to get after it a little bit more. No, I think Ryan Kanasiewicz is going to go in with the attitude of bend, don't break. Um, maybe there, there might be a few tweaks to the lines, but uh, we didn't give up anything. And to a certain point to the Tulsa locker room, hey, we had a lot of success. What do we have to show for it? Nothing. So it's a little bit frustrating on there. And we, we threw the kitchen sink at everything and or Adam and, and we have nothing to show for it so that'll do a little bit of wear and tear on you as far as your mental game some of these stats from the first period scoring chances Tulsa had seven the Grizzlies three Utah did win the faceoff battle 15 to 9 in the first frame uh, Utah, that surprises two, power, me, Utah honestly. two power play shots um, Tulsa two shorthanded shots as there was only one power play in the first period both teams had five giveaways and Utah six hits to Tulsa's five some people were wondering if it could be a physical game. It didn't really, I mean, there was some hitting going on, but it didn't look like anything that was going to go overboard. Right. I, and, you know, we talked about it last night. You know, what, what are the Tulsa going to do tomorrow to slow down the Grizzlies? You know, to just a neutral zone. And I thought it was going to be by Tulsa initiating the physical play. Not necessarily. They're doing it with their skill and a little bit of speed. And, you know, like you mentioned, what version of the Oilers are we playing? Are we playing the Tulsa Oilers or the Edmonton Oilers? But, but we have to delineate which year because this year they're not doing so hot. So 1986. You know. so let's go 1986. <laughs> That's what it seemed like that period what we were playing. But but the, with the Grizzlies, you know, the, the bend don't break. And, and uh, you know, Garrett Metcalf playing the way he did, I think we kind of, you know, we, we gave up the farm a little bit, but I think we came out on top. Speaking of which, how cool would it be to see the 1986 Edmonton Oilers? Gretzky, Messier, Curry, Paul Coffey. Like, you're talking about, like, an all-time year there. Pure. Yeah, it's... Absolutely. I'd pay so much money to, to watch that team perform. I'd just like to hang out with a couple of them. Yeah. So, so <laughs> hey, what was going through your mind? Speaking of people hanging out with us, Friday night, AFCU Friday, Grizzly still heads five days from now. Do you know who's going to be in town this weekend? I, I, I think we've had a conversation about this, but but Tyson, tell me, who's going to be in town? Well, ESPN College Game Day. Utah's having a good season. They had a big win against USC. ESPN College Game Day will be in town. For, you know, they'll probably be in town Friday night. Now, there's a lot of options for them to go. There's a lot of places that they could end up. I got an idea. AFCU Friday, tickets start at $8 when they pay you using their AFCU debit or credit card here at the Maverick Center box office. Pat McAfee, Kirk Herbstreit, Reese Davis, Desmond Howard, Lee Corso. You want to come to the game, it's on me. I got you with the AFCU Friday deal. We got plenty of room here on press row, unfortunately. Come on down. We can have Pat McAfee drop the puck. We can have Pat McAfee first intermission doing his thing. 
Maybe we can have a mascot head. Maybe we can have Lee Corsa putting on Grisby's head <laughs> before the game as we make our predictions that Stu's going to win. I mean, after all, if Cam McGuire can put on a fish costume, we can put on Grisby's head. We can get all the celebrities here. Let's do it. Pat McAfee, Kirk Herbstreet, come to the game. It's on us. The, the, you heard it from Tyson Whiting himself. He'll Heisman, sponsor you. Heisman Trophy winner Desmond Howard. If he wants to come at center ice and do a Heisman pose, absolutely. You're welcome here at Maverick Center. We want to see it happen. We want to see the Pat McAfee show here at Maverick Center on Friday. Heck, we want Pat right here. I mean, you know, it's great having you here. You'll be with us second and third periods. But, you know, what? if Pat McAfee shows up, we'll give him the seat. Uh, uh, absolutely. I might even just take the night off. Pat, you got play-by-play. -play. Don't worry about the FCC. We're on YouTube. You know what's on YouTube? A lot of cuss words. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> League might have a problem with that, but it's all right. Come on down to Maverick Center. There's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of places they can go. There's a lot of restaurants. There's probably some other sports options on a Friday night. This is the place, though. Pat, Pat McAfee, Kirk Herbstreet, the rest of the game day crew, Lee Corso, Desmond Howard, Reese Davis, Maverick Center. You got plenty of options. This is the place to be. We'll, we'll call it Pat McAfee Day. We'll have some ESPN stickers and stuff up here just for the crew. And they could see the best rivalry in the league, Grizzlies and Stillheads. I'd be down for that. They would love to see that. Forget about Jazz Clippers. Grizzlies, Stillheads, that's the rivalry you got to be at. Pat McAfee, the, in, the invitation's out there. We want to see it at Maverick Center on Friday night. It's on us. We can have him just run the show all evening if we want. Open mic. Pat McAfee, just come here and do his thing. That sounds amazing. Well, we're about set for the third, second period. As Garrett Metcalf will skate towards his net. The Grizzlies enter the ice. If you're here, you might as well join us here for the second and third periods. I'd appreciate that. I think it's interesting to kind of see the goaltending matchup. I mean, we're scoreless with both teams having quite a few good looks in the first frame. Tulsa seven shots or seven scoring chances. Grizzlies with three. If there's one line that looks like it could get it done, though, for the Grizzlies, it's that Burke, Sandlin, and Betts line. You know, Betts, you know, Betts has some good pro experience. But you look at the college stats of Nathan Burke and Ryan Sandlin. I mean, they were outstanding. You know, Sandlin played at... Minnesota State Mankato. He's been a proven goal scorer. 43 goals in his college career. And he's the son of a coach. Scott Sandlin, the Minnesota Duluth men's hockey coach, is Ryan Sandlin's father. He could easily tell with the way he plays the game and with the way he sees things that, yeah, that's the son of a coach right there. That would, that would make sense, the way that he plays a little bit more of a cerebral game and being able to find the lanes and, and like we mentioned, creating a little bit of time and space. So uh, that, that would make sense. Nathan Burke, 36 games at Bowling Green State last year. He had 17 goals and 12 assists and was a plus seven. And in 10 AHL games at the end of last year, he had three goals and two assists. He performed pretty well at that level as well. You talk about outstanding trades that Ryan Kanaswich has made, already two of them to start the season. Cole Gallant from Trois Rivieres, the, Mich the Western Michigan product, and getting Nathan Burke really adds some explosiveness to the Grizzlies' attack. And we've already seen Burke had some success with the uh, bets early uh, on that one that um, uh, Sukanik had to come up with the save. So, uh, getting what little pressure we did. You know, coming from those guys. That three-man forward unit will be on the ice for the Grizzlies to start the second period with Johnny Fairbrother and Michael Underwood. For Tulsa, it's going to be Carson Folk taking the face off. Kyle Krenkovic and Calvin Watson are the other forwards for the Oilers. Up top is Doogie Legrone and Mike McKee. Puck has dropped at center ice. And it's won by the Oilers. Kyle Krenkovic dumps it in. Tulsa skating from right to left in the second period. Grizzlies from left to right. As Underwood skates towards the far corner, gets the puck, moves ahead to Burke, who tried to backhand it. Tapped away by Tulsa. As the Oilers slot Watson, righty shot, and it's blocked out in front. As goes over to the right side, Doogie Legron throws it to the slot. Watson drops it off. Krenkovic shot, and it's blocked by Fairbrother. Fairbrother gets the puck, and he'll lift it out to center ice. Tulsa gets it back. As Legron over to McKee, back to Legron. He's on the left side, gets new tries, throws to Krenkovic, bounces off of his stick, glides towards Metcalf. Krenkovic skates towards Metcalf, so Garrett holds on as we get a whistle 30 seconds into the second period as both teams make their first line change of the frame. Interesting that through the first period, they wanted to test Garrett Metcalf low. 
He's 6'4", and he has legs longer than Kevin Carr's, so I don't know why you keep trying to test him low. You know, you have some people that have got a program height, and they're like three inches taller than they really are. Metcalf lists at 6'4", probably even taller than that, maybe 6'5", or 6'6". For those wondering, he's got to be wearing something like, I have no idea, like 36 plus threes <laughs> for, his, for his leg pads. I mean, I have no idea. Looks like we got a little bit of a delay here before the face-off as we're 30 seconds into the second period. One of the referees looking over towards the corner. Now one of the refs, that's Trevor Wolford. We got a technical problem in the booth, and then Chris Hagan says, yeah. So they're going to work on something there. Maybe the scoreboard, um, something to do with the clock, it looks like. And so we got a stoppage of play 30 seconds into the second period, which gives us time to talk about Friday night's game. Big series with the Idaho Steelheads. And yes, Pat McAfee, AFCU Friday, $8 tickets. It's on me. Herb Street, Corso, Desmond Howard, Reese Davis, you want to come on down to Maverick Center? It's on us. We got plenty of room here on Press Row on Friday night. So, looks like Wolford's talking with some of the Grizzly skaters. Gives the ice a little bit of, a time, a bit of time to settle in. Uh, I think it was kind of interesting to see last night's game and see the special teams battle. You know, the Grizzlies won the five-on-five -five battle, three to nothing. Tulsa with two power play goals and a shorty there towards the end of regulation. But, you know, here through training camp and really the first week of the regular season, I've really been intrigued with the defensive unit. You know, Josh Wesley just seems to be an AHL type of player, and he's got 163 games of AHL experience. You have to be impressed with Kyle Mayhew. And I think here in the first period, seeing a lot of ice time, Gianni Fairbrother and Michael Underwood have really looked good as well. What a luxury that uh, Kanasiewicz has. And we, you know, we mentioned it last night too, you know, having everybody and who's he going to sub in and out and, and bring in and his biggest worry right now is who's he going to sit yeah. because you know he's got all that skill that he can throw out on the ice it's really tough decisions have to be made there because you know Kate Jensen sat out last night he's making his pro debut tonight normally on a lot of teams he'd be a regular in the lineup you wouldn't, you wouldn't even have to think about it. you just insert him in there you know Jacob Semick looked good in training camp sort of Joe, Jordan Stone and Corey Thomas and you know none of those guys are in the lineup because Ryan Kanaswa just had to make some tough choices now Jared Youngman, the vice president of the Grizzlies, is going over there, and he's looking to see what the technical difficulties are. It's not a glass break like we had last year, and we haven't seen any fans there to give us a uh, give us uh, some beer chugging. Zach Reynolds, the Tulsa broadcaster, probably is very confused on the remote broadcast, and I don't know how to multitask very well to tell him that uh, we've got uh, some issues, which is why play has been delayed. Yeah, there we go. We'll give him a heads up. <laughs> They're working on something. It's hard to say. I mean, the scoreboards are working, it looks like. We're 30 seconds into the second period. It's impossible, really, to figure out what it is. Now we've got, like, three staff members in the box right now. Um, they're trying to figure it out. This looks like a uh, Grizzlies Idaho, you know, good fight where you've got everybody in the penalty box. Only this <laughs> one's in the scoring box. That's right. You got about 13 people in there. It seems like we can play a game of how many people can we fit into the scores booth there at center ice. So it looks like some fans have decided to walk to the concession stands and get a beverage or two of their choice. Might be a good idea, but we're we're stuck here. Good thing Nick Hayes brought some. I think Coca-Cola here. There you go. <laughs> to help us out through the broadcast. As they're working on some technical difficulties there at Maverick Center. Zach was wondering why the technical difficulties, why there was a, um, a stoppage of play. Um, Jimmy Lodge in the lineup replacing Eddie Matsushima. It's actually Jimmy Lodge's first game as an Oiler since February 23rd. Um, everybody just kind of standing around. I'm sure at some point both teams are thinking about whether they go to the locker room or not. And is this delay now lasting quite a while? Somebody has taken Chris Hagen's seat as he is now in an upright position. Idaho will be in town Friday and Saturday night. Looks like Matt is away from the desk. 
He was under the desk there for a second trying to figure it out. Now they got 20 minutes on the scoreboard clock. There was 19.30 left. Ryan Kanaswich and Christian Horn pacing back and forth. They're talking with each other. It was kind of interesting. Tulsa did outplay, um, you know, they, they did outplay the Grizzlies in the first period, yet we, we remain scoreless. And it looks like we will now return to live action. They will work on the technical difficulties, whatever it is, and we'll get back to hockey here. Boy, I hope Zach Reynolds isn't just seeing that graphic for 10 minutes. Right. Chris Hagan says they turned it off, they unplugged it and plugged it back in. So whatever it is worked. Isn't that the solution to everything? <coughs> Unplug it, plug it back in. Especially if it's a Microsoft product. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're not a sponsor. It's all right. Grizzlies win the draw skating from left to right as we're finally back to live action. 30 seconds into the second period. As Puck in the Oilers zone goes to center ice. Betts gets it. He'll throw it to Mayhew back in the Grizzlies zone. Over to Josh Wesley near side. Wesley throws it to center ice. Picked off by Bertuzzi, but just tapped off his stick. Mayhew skates towards the corner. Over to Martel. Martel left side with a nice move. He goes down. Tripped on his own, though, as the puck glides towards Sukanik. To, he covers up. Bertuzzi was in the area. Martel fell down, and they just tried to get it on net, and Sukanik was able to cover up. Offense his own draw for the Grizzlies. Second period, they're just hoping to generate something offensively. There is the five-man unit talks with each other, led by Cole Gallant, who's out there with Nathan Burke and Brandon Cutler. Cutler will take the draw against Davis T-Bone Cod, who's been impressive this weekend. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Left side, Tech Sheriff over towards Gallant. Gets it back towards Burke, who taps it off the far boards, and he gets his own pass in the corner. Gets double teamed. Tulsa takes over. Oilers, three on three. They get to neutral ice. Polson wraps it around the wall. No icing as Metcalf cuts it off behind his net. Puck goes to the far side. Yoon in the area. Two Grizzlies, two Oilers behind Metcalf's net. And the puck goes to the near corner. Yoon chases after it. Boudreaux gets there first. He'll roll it around the wall. It goes over the stick of Michael Farron. Far side. Farron joins the play in the corner. Texera in the area. As now it gets poked away. Constantini throws it back to the vacated near corner. Cod throws it behind his back. As the Oilers get hit by Texera, who plays a physical game. Cod skates towards the near goal line. Glides a shot towards Metcalf, who covers up. As there wasn't much velocity on that attempt. As Tyler Polson was in the area and was hit by Texera. Caught at a decent look, but just glided off his stick where Metcalf covered up. Mick Messner out there with Dylan Fitz and Tyler Penner. Grizzlies Iron Man Tyler Penner. I'm not sure how many games consecutively Gord Deneen played in, but 21st century, Tyler Penner's your Iron Man in Grizzlies history. Charge. Utah wins the drop as Fairbrother. Fitz goes down as Puck ends up in the high slot and to neutral ice. As Legrone taps the Underwood for Utah, Grizzlies skate from left to right as they spread the ice. Fairbrother gets to the Utah blue line, throws to Messner, and it deflects out of play as we get another stoppage of play. 18.04 left in the second as they'll get a new puck as it exited play. And a fan over there in section 126, about row eight, gets a souvenir. Guy in a Ryan Wagner jersey. Wagner was with the Grizzlies for about half a year and then spent a decent amount of time with the Colorado Eagles. Our captain, no less, for a period of time. Wisconsin product. As Utah wins the draw. Not a very big guy, but he played a physical game. Messner at center ice dumps it in. Chasing after it's Mike McKee. Fitz gets there. He's trying to get around McKee. McKee trying to locate the puck. Messner takes over as Messner, also a Wisconsin product, to start his college career, kicks it out to the point. And it's taken by Reggie Millette, who gets to center ice, and he dumps it in as Underwood feeds it to Fairbrother far side. He'll throw a diagonal pass for Fitz had it. Tap off his stick. He'll chase after it. Doogie Legrone gets there first with good speed. Legrone taps it off of Penner. Messner tried to get the bouncing puck, and it goes to center ice as Messner dove to try to keep it in. Oilers at center ice. Right wing, they chip it into the left corner as Austin, as Andy Carroll, in relation to Austin Carroll, former Grizzly, as it goes from the near corner to the far side. And now across to Carroll. He couldn't reach it. He'll tap it into the corner. Penner chases over. He gets the puck. Trying to clear it out. Now it goes to Sandlin. He'll carry it out of the zone. Two on one on two. Now one on four. Sandlin in the zone. Grizzlies make a change behind him as the Grizzlies make the successful line change. But up with the puck is Krenkovic. He'll dump it in. Watson chasing after it. He pushes Mayhew in the back. Watson gets the puck. Throws it to Krenkovic who couldn't handle it. Josh Wesley moves ahead to Betts. Now to center ice for Sandlin. Pass behind him. As the puck skips towards Boutre, who chases after it in the Oilers zone. He couldn't clear it out. Right wing, Betts with a shot. 
and it's blocked by Krenkovic as Mayhew in the near corner being shadowed by Carson Folk as Mayhew trying to get to Yakura. Tulsa taps it back to the corner. Boudreya will clear it out to Calvin Watson who carries it out to center ice. Down the middle, dumping into the left corner as the Oilers make a change. Grizzlies get some new forwards as well. 16-22 and counting left in the second. Still no score. Tulsa's outshot Utah 15-9. Near wing pass to Galan who gets the center ice. Ed to Martel, right wing. Martel enters the zone. He tried to feed the middle and it's picked off by Tulsa who clears it out. Chasing after it's Davis T-Bone Cod looking to start to Boudreaux. Great defensive play by Cutler to cut in front and take the pass. Cutler gets a new try as he crosses center. Three on two. Cutler gets around another skater. Left circle. Tried to center it to Martel. And Tulsa got a stick in the way. Cutler keeps it. Throws to Teixeira. Now to the left side for Jensen. Lefty shot. And that one's blocked. A lot of blocked shots by the Oilers here tonight. And it's looked like that one hurt a little bit. Back to his feet is Polson. But it looks like he's down and he's hurt. He's on two knees. Play continues to go. And now they'll stop play. As there is some action near the Tulsa bench. I think they're trying to get... Grizzlies are offside, but that's good to get Polson off the ice as he is limping and skating gingerly towards the Oilers bench as he blocked a shot. A lot of blocked shots by the Oilers here so far tonight. Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, the, the whole, I don't know, the whole commitment to Tulsa just bought it in. This, the same intensity they did not have last night. Polson hobbles into the locker room. Steve Lynn turned the Athletic trainer will look over him. Neutral zone draw near the Oilers bench is won by the Grizzlies. Underwood back deep in the Grizzlies zone across to Fairbrothers. Played a fair amount of minutes tonight. Over towards Messner. Pun sadly is intended there, unfortunately. McKee battles with Fitz. <laughs> Very sad pun there. <laughs> as he's played a lot of minutes here so far. Sheriff loses the puck at center ice. Tyler Penner skates down the middle. Drops off for Fitz. Right wing, righty shot. And Sheriff got a piece of it as it gets blocked as it taps off the end boards. Tag Bertuzzi to the far side. Gets the Sheriff at neutral ice. Two on three. Sheriff crosses center. He enters with speed to the left side. Drops it off for Ryan Olsen. Olsen with a left righty shot. Kick saved by Metcalf. It's Olsen very crafty with his shots. As Utah carries it out of the zone looking for Fitz. He gets it tapped away by Olsen. Grizzlies gather again and dump it in. As Utah makes a full line change. Five minutes into the second period. Still no score. As Legrome ahead towards Carroll. He gets the center ice. Drops it off left point for Sheriff. Dante Sheriff skates towards his right. He'll tap it off the boards near the right point. Oilers feed it to the corner. Nobody there. As Josh Wesley let it go to the near corner. Taken by Sheriff. This will get it up top for Carroll. Andy Carroll left side. Fires a lefty shot. Line to redirect it and goes wide. As Bertuzzi was looking to redirect it towards Metcalf. And redirected it off the end boards. As Tulsa dumps it in once again from neutral ice. And they get off for a change. Wesley ahead to Betts. He carries the puck down the middle. Betts skating down Broadway. Tulsa pokes it back to the near corner. Good defensive work once again by the Oilers. As near side goes to the right side. Sandal and righty shot goes wide. As he was being challenged by Jared Hilderman. Far side, Burke, Sandlin. Two Oilers there as Utah goes down out of the high slot. Wesley with a shot and it's blocked. And that was blocked once again. It was blocked up high by Andy Carroll. They stopped play to make sure Carroll's okay. Um, looked like it got him in the shoulder as they stopped play as Carroll looked like for a second he was off balance But luckily it looks like he's gonna be okay Looked at first like he might have even taken it off the the chin or the helmet It looks like he might have got him off the shoulder But yet another example of what Tulsa is willing to do to you know block a shot or anything to disrupt the Grizzlies offense Timeout on the ice 13 58 left in the second period still no score Tulsa 16 shots to the Grizzlies nine We're back in 30 seconds on the Grizzlies high Hockey Network. Thirteen fifty-eight left in the second period. No score between the Grizzlies and Oilers. Draw is going to be in the Tulsa zone. Left circle. Brandon Cutler will take the draw against Carson Folk. Last of a two-game series. Utah won last night 5-3. to three. As Utah wins the draw, Yoon throws it to the left side. Uh, to Jensen in the point, trying to get to Martel. Gets knocked down to Martel. Gets it left side. Skeets down the road. Righty shot goes wide. Oh, he had a good look there if he would have had the accuracy. Martel up top for Jensen. High slot will fire a blast off the end boards. 
as Utah skates to the corner to get it. Cole Gallant drops off for Cutler. Now to Martell, right circle. Martell being double teamed, feeds it towards the slot. Picked off by Costantini, who clears it to center. As Jensen gets it, he'll skate back into the Grizzly zone. He'll tap it off the near boards. And now it goes back to Yoon. Yoon at the Utah blue line to Jensen. Jensen back to Yoon as both guys uh, bobble it for a second. Now Utah two on one. Martell left side across to Cutler. He's to the right, trying to get it across off the far boards. Nobody home. Bouncing puck in the high slot. Grizzlies. Oh, they throw it out in front to Martell. They got right. He shot. Saved by Sukanik. Boy, Grizzlies had the puck in the high slot. Martell is all alone in front of the net. One on one battle, and somehow Sukanik was able to make the stop to keep it a scoreless game. Give him props on that one. Got to give him his due on that one. That was a crafty glove save on a, on a Martell shot that had the top label, or the top corner just labeled. Boy, Martell, a couple looks there, and one missed the net. Boy, Sukanik robbed him there. I think it's a felony in some states. As Tulsa wins the faceoff, they're behind the net. They'll throw it to the near side. Lodge battling with Fairbrother. Now it goes to Bertuzzi at center ice. They'll throw it to Sheriff, who's being held up at the Utah blue line. Skating over there. On side is Bertuzzi. He had to get around Fitz and taking it. It's Fairbrother, who's played a ton of minutes so far. Grizzly throws it to center ice looking for Yakura. And McKee picks it off. He'll throw it deeper into the Oilers zone. Does McKee is Doogie Legrome behind Sukanik, who's played outstanding in his pro debut. As Bertuzzi over to McKee, back to Bertuzzi on diagonal passes. Center ice, he gets around Fitz. Bertuzzi lost the puck as Fitz towards the near side, has it at the Utah blue line. He feeds it to center ice. Bertuzzi picks it off as they throw it towards Olsen. Now McKee back behind Tulsa's net. They throw it to center ice. Lodge taps it towards the Oilers bench right wing. Reggie Millette wraps it around the boards. Bertuzzi gathers the puck. Try to get to Lodge, it poked back to Bertuzzi. Now Lodge gets in the corner, tried to find a cutting Millet out in front. Pass goes wide, and it goes to center ice. Oilers still in control of the puck as Hilderman skates towards the Tulsa blue line. Now angles right as Hilderman crosses center, and he'll wrap it around the boards. Near side, Underwood gets the puck. As he skates behind Utah's net over to Fairbrother. He gets his stick tap with Tulsa. Right point, Oilers keep it in the offensive zone. Across to Carroll, lefty shot. That one goes wide. It got redirected by an Oilers stick. Fitz will carry it out of the zone. Two on three. Gets to the red line and dumps it in. Grizzlies make a line change. 11.37 and counting left in the second. Still no score. Tyler Polson gets around Sandlin. Polson with good speed. Gets to the left. Drops off for Farron. Righty shot. Love saved by Metcalf. As Farron was all alone just outside the left circle. And his righty shot was... Saved by Metcalf as he holds on. Metcalf so far 17 for 17. But if the Grizzlies are going to get the two points here today, they're certainly going to have to earn it. Draw is going to be in the near circle. Kyle Betts will take it against Carson Folk. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Josh Wesley will skate towards the far side, move it ahead. As Grizzly gets the center ice across towards Betts, who taps it in deep. Sandlin chases after it. Tulsa gets there first. Watson lets it go past him. It's going to be icing. He will skate towards the Grizzlies goal line. And the arm enthusiastically raised by Tyler Keston as icing is on Tulsa with 11-12 left in the second. Interesting to see the Grizzlies are spending a little bit more time of possession in the offensive zone than, than the, the first period. So maybe a little correction and a little bit of a, a little bit more effort from the Grizzlies are paying off. Just a little bit more patience as well. Yeah. Betts will take the draw against Folk. Far circle. Utah wins it. Josh Wesley. Left point. Shot and it's blocked again. Wesley gets it back. That shot's blocked as well. Tulsa's got a breakaway. Calvin Watson skates down the middle. Righty shot. Saved by Metcalf. Watson gets it back. Left circle. He tried to feed it out in front and it tapped off Mayhew's stick. Three days saved by Garrett Metcalf. Now. They throw it to the right side, just Tulsa. Folk, I try to feed it out in front, and it goes through the crease over to the near boards. As Tulsa holds up Utah, two on two. Now three on three along the wall, near side. Folk comes out of the pile with the puck. He gets challenged by Betts in the corner. Watson fed it through. Krenkovic, who couldn't handle it. Mayhew carries it out of the zone. Krenkovic behind him. Mayhew gets to center. Skates over to the left circle. Mayhew 
We'll skate around Tulsa's net. He gets to Burke, right side. Uh, Burke looked to center, it's picked off. Now Tulsa trying to get Krenkovic at center ice. He couldn't reach it. And it's going to be icing on the Oilers. But how about that breakaway? Watson had all sorts of time, and Metcalf with a big save to keep it scoreless. Yep. Met Metcalf was, was in the challenge position the whole time as it's coming into him. He just kind of kicks it out to the side, and then he was ready for the rebound and immediately got back up. We're about halfway through these scheduled 60 minutes. We've seen everything except for a fight and a goal here so far. Cutler will take the draw against Folk, and... Utah wins it as Cutler throws it to the corner, goes over the stick of Gallant. Tulsa chases after it, near side. Konstantini ahead to Krenkovic. And now they get to Boudreau, who lifts it high into the air. Yoon get, gets there before Krenkovic as Cutler feeds it near the Grizzlies bench. Now cross-ice pass picked off by Konstantini. They'll throw it to the Utah blue line where Yoon takes it for Utah. Grizz skating from left to right here in the second period. Watson over to Folk, left side plenty of time. He'll take a lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf in the butterfly position. Rebound goes out to Utah. Three on three. Grizz, Gallant over to Martel. Gains the line. McKee challenges it. Now up ahead, another breakaway. Tag Bertuzzi, left side. Lefty shot and he fanned on it. Underwood was chasing after him as the puck goes to the far corner. As Bertuzzi over to Olsen, right side shot. Blocked by Underwood. Grizzlies left it out of the zone as Grizzlies playing with fire here. But Garrett Metcalf's been unbelievable. 9.25 and counting left in the second. LeBron carries it across center ice. Now ahead to Sheriff. Left side righty shot. Kick save by Metcalf. As Sheriff throws to the left side. Grizzlies clear it out. Andy Carroll chases after it. Near side of the Oilers zone. Diagonal pass towards the Oilers bench. Olsen dumps it in. Bertuzzi gets it. Centers the Sheriff. And great defensive play by Dean Yakura to cut in front of an Oilers skater and clear it out to center. Oilers still in control as Olsen, right side, stops near the boards. Challenged by Fairbrother. Spins it around. Underwood over to Fairbrother. Over in the far corner, deep in the Grizzly zone. Sheriff takes it away from him and throws it to the right point. Hilderman across to Carroll. Left side, Carroll fires a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Utah as Tulsa took it away. Left side, Carroll. Lefty shot goes wide. Sheriff, far goal line over skates it as Olsen chases around the far wing boards and gets it. Ryan Olsen over to tag Bertuzzi, high slot. He'll skate in, lefty shot, blocked by Underwood. As Bertuzzi throws to the near goal line. Ryan Olsen up top for Carroll. Carroll fakes a shot, now he takes a lefty shot. On a redirect to Mike, Metcalf makes the save. That's a bobble towards the end wing boards. Bertuzzi has a glance off his stick to neutralize. Still scoreless as Hilderman dumps it in. Oilers make a line change, Yakura comes off. Good shift for him. As delayed offside, the arm raised by the linesman. Underwood feeds it to center ice for Messner. Tapped off his stick and flies around the near wing boards. Sukanik throws to the far side. Tulsa, long range pass to Polson. He gathers it. Polson, left side, drops it off for Farron. He'll take a righty shot. And it's blocked by the stick of Josh Wesley and flies out of play. Great action here at Maverick Center as we remain scoreless. Well, thanks to Garrett Metcalf because everybody else seems to be a, a little bit step behind in Tulsa's ability to consistently get behind our defense and generate offensive chances for themselves. That's proving to be a big problem. You know, we talked about, you know, Tulsa blocking a lot of shots. Their last few minutes, Grizzlies with some blocked shots of their own. Betts will take the draw against Reggie Millette. And draw one by Tulsa. Michael Farron, righty shot. And it's blocked by Wesley. Polson for Tulsa might have gotten a piece of it. Wesley clears it out to center. Boudreau dumps it in. Great effort by both teams here so far. As Wesley throws to Mayhew. It's Mayhew far corner. Ahead to Betts who tried to reach it and gathered it. As going down is Nathan Burke. He's back to his feet. Action near the Grizzlies bench. Two on two scrum. As Puck goes to Burke who chases after it. One on four. Burke skates towards the left side. Took a lefty shot. That's blocked by the stick of an oiler. And that was Davis T-Bone Cod. Two-on-two -two battle near corner deep in the still the Oilers zone. We play the stillhead so much that Tulsa's become the stillheads. As over towards the near side, <laughs> Costantini throws a pass Sandal and out to neutralize. Wesley dumps it back in as Tulsa to the left side will clear the zone out to neutralize. Oilers, now they try to find a cutter out in front as Brandon Cutler across towards Sandlin. Good poke check by Costantini. Now it's the left side. Cutler gets it the far goal line. He skates around Tulsa's net. Now to the corner. Cutler collides, but feeds it up top for Teixeira. Right side near the boards. They got left. Yeah. Oh, I got redirected. Saved by Simon. Saved rebound. Shot a score! Scramble play out in front of the net. And Brandon Cutler gives the Grizzlies a 1 0 lead. Boy, the puck bounced about two or three times there. And then Brandon Cutler out in front gets Utes on the board.
Teixeira took the shot, bounced off at Galani, then hit the side of the net. And somehow, Cutler was able to locate the puck right there in front of the crease. Tulsa's got to be feeling like they're taking a little bit of a gut punch right now. All that pressure, and now they're down one. Brandon Cutler's going to get the goal. It's his second of the year. He had 15 and 32 games for the Grizzlies last year. As the Oilers win the faceoff, they skate from right to left here in the second period. Utah leads 1 0. Legrone over to Krinkovic. It bounces off of his skate as Texera dumps it in. Behind the net, Sukanik, who gave up his first pro goal, goes out to center ice as Texera moves ahead towards the Grizzlies. Bench picked off by Calvin Watson. Watson gets tripped up. No call. Asher is a call. Delay penalty. And Tulsa is going to be on the power play for the first time tonight. Legrone ahead to McKee. Delayed penalty. McKee gets to center ice. McKee, the lumbering 6'5 defenseman. Over to the right point. Tulsa in the attack zone. Carson Folk has a stick slash. That might be another penalty. Folk is hoping that that second penalty gets called. Holding's going to be the call. Then Folk tried to draw a slash. Uh, but it didn't look like that one was called. So just one penalty on the Grizzlies. Holding's a call. And Tulsa will be on the power play. For the first time tonight with 6.04 left in the second. Now the two referees talk it over. Trevor Wolford and David Lilly. Folk lost his stick. I think he was trying to buy the call there. Just kind of keep his stick loose and then hope for a slash. Looks like he's going to get a, a new stick from Tony Denzer, the equipment manager. He's been in this league for a long time. Rob Murray talking it over with one of the referees, and that's Wolford. I think Murray probably wants to slash there, try to get a five on three. Yeah, trying to read the body language between Kanasiewicz and Horn and seeing if they've got a vibe. It almost looks like they're being sent to the box, but can't tell. One guy is going to the box, surprising that they haven't entered yet. The box, the penalty box door is open for the Grizzlies. Well, I was, there was, Oh, the I original the right. memory loss thing. So, like, I, there was one call I thought, oh, that could be a call. And sure enough, it looked like a trip or something, but they called holding. I think they're trying to get the right player. Now a Grizzly jumps over the boards, and he's going to the penalty box, and it's McMessner, number 10. So Tulsa's going to be on the power play for the first time this evening. They were two for four on Saturday night. On the Cutler goal that was scored 13-17 in, the assist went to Cole Gallant and Keone Teixeira. They show the replay. It wasn't, I, I don't even think it was Messner. If anything, it was a trip there by, I think, Penner. I think they got the wrong guy in the box. They called Messner for holding. He didn't do anything. If anything, there was a trip yeah. later on, about two seconds later. It's interesting. Either way, Grizzlies win the faceoff. They clear it out. Tulsa from right to left is Hilderman. Behind his net, Utah leading 1-0. Grizzlies did commit a penalty, but it's probably the one guy, the wrong guy in the box. Sheriff right side dumps it in. Underwood chases after. He's behind Utah's goal line near the corner. Over to Sandlin, back to Underwood. And he'll clear it out, does Underwood, all the way towards Sukanik. Tomas is his first team, T-O-M-A-S. Grizzlies get some new forwards as Sandlin and Betts exit. As Hilderman gets to the Sheriff, who's got good speed, he crosses the center ice right wing. Sheriff gets to the line, gets challenged by Fairbrother. Over to the high slot, Grizzlies cleared out to center where Hilderman was at the logo. Heads to the right side, Olsen drops off for Bertuzzi. Now Hilderman in the right side, take a righty shot, and it's blocked by Penner. Puck goes back to Hilderman, over to Bertuzzi, he lets it go. Ols Olsen collides with Fairbrother. Now Penner will dump it in, and he'll clear it out as Tolson was able to get three, back, three guys back to neutral ice. Both teams make a line change halfway through Tulsa's first power play of the game. Grizz lead 1-0. Tulsa skates in. Carson Folk over to the far corner, being challenged by Mayhew. Folk feeds it to the left side. Boudreau will take a lefty shot that goes wide. Boudreau contributed to, two, to both power play goals last night. Boudreau left side, take a shot. It's blocked by the stick of Cutler. Cutler flexes the stick to make sure it's not broken. Wesley throws to the right side, kept in by Boudreau. Or another oiler, Andy Carroll. Puck lifts high into the air as it tapped off the stick of Nathan Burke and flew out of play. There's a fan in the front row. Comes away with a souvenir wearing a Miles Gendron jersey. Very Gen nice. Gendron, I think, is playing in the EIHL this year. I think that's John. John, the Grizzlies fan, with the game puck. Tulsa still using a very wide power play unit, trying to spread out the Grizzlies and then collapse at the last second. 33 seconds left in the power play. Utah leads 1-0. Grizz win the draw. They're in their own zone. Jensen 
Over to Sandlin, who tried to clear it out and does successfully, getting it past Andy Carroll. Sukanik behind his net will give way as Carroll will take the puck wearing number 14. Good skater. Left wing pass to Folk. Folk enters the zone, now veers off to the right. As Oilers across, pass picked off. Sandlin gets it. Two on three. Over to Betts, trying to get it back to Sandlin. And the puck bounced over a stick. Sandlin, right wing, will tap it off the end boards. No retreat defensively. As Krenkovic to Folk as the Grizzlies are back at full strength. Successful penalty kill for the Grizz as Folk out to center ice. Now to the left for Krenkovic. He'll have a tap off his stick. He chases after it. Now to Watson. Looks to center it to Folk. He rolls to Metcalf. Puck still loose. And it looks like now Garrett has held on. Good job by Kay Jensen and Brian Yoon boxing out Tulsa in front of the crease. Not letting them get to Metcalf and getting that second look. Time out of the ice. We'll take one as well. Grizzlies hockey brought to you by Coca-Cola, where real magic is only a sip away. We're back in 30 seconds after this word from Rio Tinto. Utah leads Tulsa 1-0 as there's 3 minutes 49 seconds left in the second period. Good penalty kill but work by the Grizzlies. Uh, Tulsa might have had one good look there. And I think for the Grizzlies, you know, you got the 1-0 lead. I mean, Tulsa's had a lot of offensive pressure. Garrett Metcalf's been outstanding. But the Grizzlies have held the strong and lead by one. I'll turn the mic up for you. <laughs> There we go. What have you noticed here? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> We've just no, said you, you, you're looking for ebb and flow, and you're looking for indications. I, I still see that Tulsa's getting too much pressure, and we're spending too much time in our own zone. When we break out, we're only breaking out at one at a time and not three abreast. So um, I, I think some changes here, you know, like that we talked about at the end of the first intermission, but something should change here towards, you know, Rest of this period. Tulsa wins the dry. Hilderman shot blocked by Gallant as Tulsa behind Utah's net. Two on two battle. Fairbrother holds up an Oiler. Reggie Millette tries to join the play. Two Oilers, two Grizzlies. Cutler over there trying to hack it away. Underwood surveying as well as Martel the Rooster looking it over with Jimmy Hop, Jimmy Lodge. As out of the puck pile it goes to Tulsa. Jimmy Lodge far corner as trying to fire it towards the net. Tapped off the stick of Cutler. That's Two blocks by Cutler's stick recently. So trying to get to the right point, does Tolson. It exits his own. It's a foot race. Hilderman gets there first behind the Oilers' net, being challenged by the Rooster. Hilderman, long range pass, doesn't connect as Josh Wesley lifted the stick of T Bone Cod. As far side, Messner gets it. Messner serving the Grizzlies penalty, even though I'm not sure he was the one that committed it. As Martel, right side center ice across to Penner. He's to the left. He's just outside the circle, being challenged by Olson. Penner. Around Utah's net to Messner in the right corner. Up top for Wesley. Right side shot. Gets redirected and flies in the air. And Tulsa gets it in front of the crease. That was redirected by Penner. As Fitz left side. Look to center it. And a good job by Costantini getting a stick in the way. Tulsa attacks the other way. Three on three at center ice. They get towards Boudreaux. He couldn't quite reach it. As Boudreaux crashes along the end wall. Fitz throws the center. Bouncing puck. Penner chases after. Gets around an oiler. One on two. Penner tried to drop it off. But skating the other way was Messner. As Sheriff gets the center ice, he'll dump it in. Sheriff chasing after it with good speed. Metcalf throws it to the near corner. As Penner battling with Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi throws to McKee. McKee was somehow able to keep it in as he bounced it off his body. Sheriff near corner battling with Wesley. Dante Sheriff around Utah's net. He's now to the right circle. As Sheriff backhands it to the left side. Bertuzzi gets it off the boards as he couldn't reach it. Bertuzzi left side, lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf. And he holds on, 152 left in the second. Not many rebounds allowed by Metcalf here so far. That's exactly the point. Otherwise, the shot count would even be higher, but he's been able to hold that off. And, you know, Tulsa's right there to be, you know, challenging down those should he give up one of those. But to his credit, not only is he seeing the shot, blocking the shot, but he's controlling the rebound and not giving him a second shot. Second intermission, we'll go over some scores from around the world of sports. 
We'll chat about what we've seen the first 40 minutes and we'll also go over some NFL scores as well. 152 is left in the second period. It's the Grizzlies one and the Oilers nothing. Utah wins the draw. Texera throws to the far side. Kept in by McKee, right point. Looked to center it. It glanced off a stick. And now towards the near wing board. Sandal and battles with Farron. Farron gets it left wing. Righty shot. And it bounces off Texera. And Metcalf's able to get it on one hop of the ice. 140 is left in the second. Still 1 nothing Utah. Good measure of a goalie is, you know, not only is he controlling his rebounds, but is he controlling the play and the puck in front of him? And anything that comes near him, he's like a human vacuum cleaner and just sucks up it. And he's had, a, you know, a couple close to the corners of the net, uh, out the way, you know, even as high as six foot. And he's controlling those. Utah wins the draw. Sandlin ahead to Nathan Burke, who gets the center ice, and he'll drive it around the wall. Hits a stanchion and goes towards the slot. Boy, if you would have seen that, he would have chased after the puck, but he was skating towards the point. And it's what you call Utah hop in Idaho. They got those that just bounce off the stanchion and roll towards the slot. Burke skates towards the near goal line, has a tap back towards the end wall. As Tulsa chips to the left side, Cog clears it to center, where Yoon gets it as the puck was wobbling on its side. As Yoon skates back to the Utah blue line, now head to bets at the center ice logo, he gets cut off. Cod skates towards the right side, righty shot goes wide. Puck along the near wing boards, out to center ice. Martel gets held up by Polson as Gallant gets the puck. One minute left in the period, left side, righty shot. Glove saved by Sukanic. And the whistle blows with 57 seconds left in the se seconds. Well, Sukanic's proven equal to the task for everything except that, that down low one by Cutler and then uh, anything for the outside in. I think we're going to need to get a move in some east to west action and uh, get a move in pipe to pipe before we're able to get a little bit, get more on him. He's a little bit too comfortable back there. Draws the left side, Cutler will take it against Carson Folk. Less than a minute left in the second period. Tolls has outshot the Grizzlies 26 to 15. But Utah leads 1-0. Draw goes to the left side. Fairbrother over to Martell as Utah win the, won the draw. Cutler left side shot as blocked and flies off the protective netting as we get another whistle with 50 seconds left in the second. Boy, the effort by both teams have been outstanding here in the first 40 minutes. Commitment to that total defense just on the total number of block shots by each team will, will tell you that. Martel will take the draw against Carson Folk. Face off one by the Oilers is Krenkovic. Will bounce off the glass, lifts high into the air. Cutler towards the Tulsa blue line, gets it, he dumps it back in. Sukanic drops off for Hilderman. And Watson at the Tulsa blue line. He clears it towards center. Cutler gathers it and he'll lift it back in. Hilderman chases after it in the right corner. Half a minute left in the second period as Hilderman skates down the middle. A right wing pass towards Folk connects. He skates towards his left. Now he's in the high slot. Right lefty shot. Glove saved by Metcalf. It bounced off his glove over to the right side as Gallant literally kicks it to new tries. Martel drops off for Cutler at center. Cutler gets to the left point. It'll take a lefty shot. And a blocker saved by Sukanic. Ten seconds left in the period. Andy Carroll drops off for Hilderman. Six seconds. Now to Carroll at center ice. He's being challenged by Yakura. Utah takes it. Two seconds left. Fitz fires a shot. And a save by Sukanic in the butterfly position. As Fitz with a good look, but time ran out. If he would have had an extra five seconds, he would have gotten all the way to the circle and maybe found himself a better shooting angle with the, more of a quality shot. Both teams will head to the locker room. As the only goal scored in this game is Brandon Cutler. 13-17 in with Cole Gallant and Keone Texera getting the assist. When we come back, we'll recap the first two periods of play as well as go over some scores from around the world of sports. As Utah leads after two, once again the score, Utah won, Tulsa nothing on the Grizzlies Hockey Network.
Second intermission here at Maverick Center. Utah leads 1-0. Neither team scored in the first period. Tulsa had 13 shots to the Grizzlies, 8. Tulsa outshot Utah 14-9 in the second period. And Randy Cutler with the only goal in the game. 13-17 in to the second with Cole Gallant and Keone Tech Sheriff with the assist. Grizzlies dominating the faceoff circle. 31 to 13 is the Grizzlies edge on faceoffs through two periods. And scoring chances really have been in favor of Tulsa. They've got 15 scoring chances through two periods. The Grizzlies have seven. In terms of shots, Brandon Cutler leads the way with four, including the one goal. Ryan Sandlin has three shots. Josh Wesley, Jordan Martell, and Michael Underwood each with two shots. For Tulsa, Carson Folk and Ryan Olson each have five. With two shots, Tyler Polson, Andy Carroll, Calvin Watson, Michael Farron, Dante Sheriff, Kyle Krenkovic, and Tag Bertuzzi. It's been a good goaltending matchup. Metcalf has stopped all 27 he has seen, and Tomas Sukanik in his pro debut has saved 16 of 17. And really the one goal is just that play out in front of the net with a lot of bodies and Cutler was able to identify where the puck was and put it away. Uh, there was nothing really Sukana could have done about it. No, not at that point. I mean you could say control the rebound earlier but you also had three goalies or three goalies three Grizzlies in the uh, proximity and Cutler ended up and just put it in the net. So uh, outside of that he's been absolutely stellar. So uh, you know controlling the play in front of him is uh, you know just like Darren Metcalf everything out in front of him and a little bit of a you know enjoyable goalie battle So I've been one penalty on each side Tulsa got called for a bench minor too many men 13 26 into the first period served by Tyler Polson in the second period Mick Messner who just happened to be in the area it was a it was like Messner was near the guy and then Penner tripped him up Messner got the penalty. Guilty by association. Well, it was like it was a hold. Messner didn't really hold him, but it looked like Penner tripped him. And they called Messner for a hold that really wasn't there. It was that, that would explain the confusion <laughs> on the bench when he's coming <laughs> off. He's hey, wait a minute, it's me? not me. <laughs> it's like Bill Lambeer back in Pistons games in the early 90s. He always oh, had to yeah. look on me. Yeah, I, right. I didn't do anything. Mr. Elbow. Yeah. <laughs> Through two periods, Utah leads 1-0. I think you can actually watch this game on three on the ECHL Facebook page, if I remember right. How fun is that? In overtime, Newfoundland over Reading, 2-1. Newfoundland goes to 3-0 this season. Reading is now 0-2-1. Trois Rivière defeats Worcester 4-1. Former Grizzly defenseman Bryson Martin, who Guy Carenza last year nicknamed the Sheriff, probably due to his mustache more than anything else. He's playing for 12 Riviera this season. Week seven of the National Football League, at least I think it's week seven in the NFL. Um, some games that have gone final. Ravens defeat the Lions 38 to six. As it was a tough day for the Lions. Both teams are now five and two this season. Bears over the Raiders 30 to 12. Bears are now two and five. Raiders are three and four. Browns in a high scoring affair defeat the Colts 39-38. Patriots with a last second touchdown. They defeat the Bills 29-25. Giants over the Commanders in a pillow fight, 14-7 the final there. And the Falcons over the Buccaneers, 16-13. In progress, hey Bronco fans, the Salt Lake Valley doesn't show your game. You might end up with a win. Broncos 16, Packers 10. That game early fourth quarter. Chiefs lead the Chargers 24-17 that game with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And how about Grizzlies fan Randy Connolly? Big time Chiefs fan, but he decides to come to the Grizzlies game here this afternoon. Props to him. Late fourth quarter, Steelers have a seven-point lead. They lead the Rams in a rematch of Super Bowl 14, 24-17. And late fourth quarter, the Seahawks lead the Arizona Cardinals 17-10. Two NHL games, one going on right now. Second intermission, Red Wings lead the Flames 4-2. to two. And at 6.30 tonight, the Bruins are at the Anaheim Ducks. Bruins are 4-0 this season. Anaheim is 1-3. When we come back, we'll talk about what we've seen through the first two periods. And we'll also talk about that Idaho series coming up with the ASU Friday on Friday night. Pat McAfee, Kirk Herbstreet, come on down. Enjoy us. Enjoy a Friday night of Grizzlies hockey. They have not experienced the best rivalry in the league. Grizzlies still heads. I think they would certainly enjoy it. 
Uh, hopefully they come out to Maverick Center on Friday. We got all sorts of room on press row. They can take over the entire row if they want, although I think Cam McGuire will be here. He'll take a spot as well. Uh, you yeah, know, maybe we can have Lee Corso put on Grisby's head uh, here on the air pregame. Now, wouldn't that be something? I'd like to see that. You want to go viral? There's a way to go viral. Let's just I, get the I think college we have an extra one down here. there somewhere. Absolutely. We got an extra one. Now, what if Corso thinks the Stillheads are going to win? I mean, we might have to pack whatever that mascot is, which isn't a fish, oddly enough. You it, know, it, Stillhead's a fish, but the mascot is some sort of bear. It, it is bear, and I, I believe it's true. It, I, I is just that his go name? I, I, I'm going <laughs> true the bear. I don't know. <laughs> I hope and you can correct me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I just named the mascot after A.J. White. Just call him A.J. White, you know, it's... He's been there long enough that, you know, you've yeah. got to get named something after him. Well, A.J. White was a Grizzly at one time, right, yeah. for a year? The, 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 COVID. Year the, the year that Idaho didn't play in the 2020-21 yeah. season. That's right. So we got a lot of fun here with the Stillheads in town this upcoming Friday and Saturday. Based off both nights, we'll be at 7-10. We'll come back and talk hockey as through two periods. Utah leads Tulsa 1-0. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Second intermission here at Maverick Center. It's a Grizzlies one, Tulsa nothing. And Tyson Whiting here with Tim Broussard. Grizzlies won the faceoff battle 16 to four in the second period, even though it looks like they got it the other way around. Looks like most of the numbers are kind of the, the, the opposite. Grizzlies with four scoring chances. Tulsa, 15 scoring chances through two periods. Um, you know, Tulsa's had every opportunity you can think of. Uh, Watson with a breakaway. There were some other great chances. and. One stop after another by Garrett Metcalf, and he's really stood tall here in the first two periods. I mean, realistically, he, the score could be three to three to one, four yeah. to one, easy, and that would be like, well, that's the way the Grizzlies are playing right now. But uh, we have a one nothing lead, and that's due to Garrett Metcalf, honestly. Grizzlies goal. I mean, Brandon Cutler pretty much made that play, skated to the left side, and then around the net, got it up top to Texera. Um, Cutler was just out in front. Texera took the shot. Looked like it bounced a couple times and then there's just a scramble play out in front of the net Cutler was able to identify the puck and put it away he's been pretty sharp through five periods this season i mean brandon cutler whether it's a two-way game and really he's probably at his best on those scramble plays you know those plays that aren't necessarily designed those ad lib type of plays that seems to be where brandon cutler is at his best especially on the offensive defensive side of things well he just got that knack for the puck some people just it just finds it on their puck it's almost like playing you know nhl 2000 you know 24 and you just somehow magically end up with it on your on your stick and 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 darn it you know that's what happened to him and he's one of those players and the thing is not only did that happen but he made it count by burying it a lot of chances by tulsa it seems like they're working the transition game a little bit and was able to work a couple times getting behind Utah's defense. Yeah, that was a problem and it was consistent. It wasn't like a one-off type thing. It was a, uh, a a consistent effort where it just seemed like they seemed to get behind our uh, our defense and then we were back on our heels trying to chase them, chase them down. And, you know, once again, Garrett Metcalf with the, Merritt Metcalf with the, the impressive save. I think both teams have to be encouraged with the way they're playing. I think fans really have to be encouraged. You know, Grizzlies defensively, they haven't given up a five-on-five -five goal here so far in five periods. And I think if you're the Oilers, regardless of what the outcome of this game looks like, they have to be very optimistic with the way their forwards have played. Looks like their defensive unit's got some talent. And if Sukanik plays like he has the first two periods, they may have found themselves a goalie. I mean, last year, 877 team save percentage. If they get Sukanik playing well and, you know, get good performances out of Gage Alexander, 
they can end up being a pretty good team this year. Yeah, I thought Gage Alexander, um, I don't know, experienced a little bit of just frustration last night and uh, didn't do as well as he wanted to. But, but between him and Sukanik, I, I've got to give it to Sukanik as far as the overall starter, at least at least what we've seen from this small sample size, right? E either way, this Tulsa team is a lot different than last year, at least a lot more competitive, a lot more speed, skill. Uh, this is not the same Tulsa that we ended up with at the end of last year that, you know, came in here at the end of the, you know, just before playoffs. It's kind of interesting with as hard as both teams have played this weekend that we've seen very few penalties. Both teams are playing very disciplined. The Grizzlies were near the top in penalty minutes last year. Um, through five periods, it seems like pretty disciplined play by both teams. Yeah, and, and it kind of like the Brian Yoon thing from last night, and I, I got to get off that off, off last night, but it, and, <laughs> and into today, he's able to play physical and the body and not take the penalty. And, and, and that's a whole skill set beyond it, itself. And, and I thought Tulsa would come out today having the, uh, you know, to muck up the, the neutral zone and by initiating a lot of physical play. Not necessarily. They're doing it with through speed and skill, and and I'm glad that we've got the you know our guys back on the the, the blue line that are you know being able to hold that off. Got a good camera crew here on Flow Sports. You know, they, there's a little bit of a delay there. Uh, we uh, looked like there was a malfunction there on the sports table. 30 seconds and uh, had to fill some time there. But our camera crew all game long have been seeing it on the video board at center ice they've done a great job yeah i love love seeing the work from those guys so thank you jed justin and jeff ian boyd and brandon appreciate you guys going into the third period um it's hard to kind of say what adjustments need to be made i mean it's it's been a pretty good game on both sides i think you know, both teams would probably like to get another power player or two and see what they can, you know, make a go of it there. Um, low scoring game, you know, for the Grizzlies, spend the period, win the game, I guess, with that one goal lead. Tulsa probably has to play a little bit more aggressive on the offensive side of things to try to tie things up. Right, so keep the energy up, not get complacent, uh, not play off a little bit, maybe even uh, attack a little bit more. And what, what, what does that mean, Tim? You're going to throw your wings in. You, you're going to throw the, the centerman playing more of an uh, attack position. And, and uh, you know, for the, the other note I had on here was uh, it seemed to be short line changes. So when you do that, you're able to do, you know, hey, guys, you go out there, bust out, you know, what you can in 30 seconds and 40 seconds and no longer than that. And you're coming off and, and we're going to, you know, throw the next line out there and keep everybody fresh keep the energy high I'd like to I wish we had how many penalty how many minutes on the ice everybody's had seems like the whole game Johnny Fairbrother has been out there for Utah it looks like he's gonna be a workhorse all season and you know, he's not gonna have the puck a ton in the offensive zone but it just seems like he really knows how to play and there's a reason why he's got an NHL entry-level deal yep the the cerebral type player and the, the other thing about that is well, what's a good indication of that? How do you know what he's thinking when, when his head's up? You know, if he's if he's got his heads up and he's collecting the puck and he's making it into the transition game, he's watching for the pattern that the wings are going to cut in at and where he's going to catch them on the pass and where you know in relation to where the Tulsa defense or or you know wingers are at as far as wh where he's being challenged and that's a really good measure of how comfortable that defenseman is in his role at that time. But there are some subtle changes to the Grizzlies forward lineup. You didn't necessarily see Bet Sandlin and Burke on the ice at the same time. So it almost seemed like Ryan Kanasiewicz made some subtle adjustments to the forward lineup there um, in the second period. I'd expect more of that throughout the, the third period here. What, I mean, why not? You know, you, you you do have a one goalie, not much, but but you, you haven't had a lot of success in, in the way that Tulsa keeps uh, attacking. You know, you got to make some adjustments. It's only the second game. This is the sixth period of the season. Hey, go out there and, and tinker with your lines a little bit. The luxury that Ryan had, Ryan Kanasiewicz has is you've got that skill. You can you can play, you know, mix and match with your Lego pieces, and you're still going to be okay. You, you're not trying to hide something. Uh, a player that's not as strong because you've got injuries or something like that. So, so go ahead and tinker with the lines a little bit. It's kind of the opposite of what I said at the first intermission, but but I'm thinking if I was in that position, I'd probably go ahead and do that. When we come back, uh, third period action as Utah leads Tulsa one to nothing. Grizzlies had a pretty good record when leading after two last season. Let's see if we'll get some beer chugging on the video board here when we. Are away for the next minute or so. So they got Simba Cam, very popular Grep Maverick Center. I, oddly enough, it's Simba Cam with what's that? The uh, 
Titanic music. Yeah, the, the, yeah how ironic, <laughs> right? Uh, Cindy Dion singing the, the, the well, Titanic Simba theme. could be whatever they did there with, like, DiCaprio and that but one lady. You know, it was kind of like that there on that oh, edge Kate of that Winslet. boat. Yeah. Kind of similar funny. to that. Maybe we just call it the Titanic cam. <laughs> That's funny. We come back left third period action. Utah leads 1 0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. There's no measure of comfortability here. Utah wins the faceoff as Tulsa's Carson Fogue dropped his, or his stick broke as he was taking the faceoff. Grizzlies in the attack zone, skating from right to left. Action behind Tulsa's net as Mike McKee challenged by Sandlin. Now Nathan Burke overskates a puck. He battles with Folk and McKee pushes Burke along the glass as puck goes from one corner to the other. As Doogie Legrone ahead to Calvin Watson. He's challenged by Fairbrother as Fairbrother will bounce it off of Watson. It goes to center ice. Grizzlies enter the off or Toll centers the offensive zone as Folk dumps it in. Underwood chases after it. He gets it. And he'll outlet it to neutralize as Sandal and crosses center. He dumps it in. Tulsa chases after it. Hilderman behind his net loses it. Kyle Betts high fanned on trying to throw it in front of the net towards Martel. Martel trying to locate it. Couldn't. Krenkovic throws to the left point. Mayhew cuts it off. He gets the puck as he's double teamed. Watson pushes Mayhew once, twice. That second one's going to be a penalty. Utah's going to get a power play as Cole Gallant throws the center ice, touched up by Krankovic as Watson pushed Mayhew once, and he pushed him a second time. Mayhew flew into the boards, and that second one's going to be a penalty. Cross-checking is the call, and 58 seconds into the third period, the Grizzlies will be on the power play for the second time tonight. Well, Watson got his money out of that one, didn't even complain about it, just went to the box and sat down. He's shaking his head. One of those, you know, there's not much you can say there. Hit him once, and then the second time got Mayhew off balance, and that's where the call was made. Quiet crowd here at Maverick Center as Tulsa wins the faceoff. They clear it out as it goes over the head of Martell. Josh Wesley will skate over there as Metcalf behind his net. We'll give it to West, or a fake to Wesley. Got it to Cutler. Cutler at the near goal line as the fans chant, shame, 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 and something else at Watson. As Collar to the right side, throws to the far corner. Hilderman spins along the wall. The Rooster couldn't keep it in. Puck glides towards the near goal line. Metcalf will take it. Caught chasing after him. As Metcalf over towards neutral ice. Hilderman will skate towards his left to neutral ice. He'll throw it back into the Oilers zone. Mike McKee will zing it along the boards. Over now. Farring got it right side. Two on three. Farring gets held up by Josh Wesley, the former Oiler. As Martell hacking away, trying to get the puck. 
As it goes to Keone Texera, Grizzlies will make a line change as Fitz will exit. As Texera dances around the far circle of the Grizzlies zone, Grizzlies will complete a line change as Texera, six-year pro, near side, neutralized, drops off for Mayhew, gets to center. Kyle Mayhew skates down the middle, he's on side. Mayhew with a lucky shot, saved by Sukanic. As Burke over towards the near side, now Mayhew gets it back. He'll throw it up top for Texera. Left side, Texera over to Mayhew. Left side back to Texera, one-timer, saved by Sukanic. Couple good looks by the Grizzlies as Mayhew just kind of walked down the middle and found a scoring chance. And then Texera, high slot with a good look. Sukanic made both saves. I think Tulsa read that as he was waiting to pass and he just split the he middle just and kept going. just kept going. Tulsa will make a line change. Davis T Bone Cod will take the drop. Kyle Betts will take the face off for Utah. Sandlin and Burke uh, down low. Texera and Mayhew up top. Two defensemen on this Grizzly shift as Utah wins the draw. Mayhew left point, skates towards the left circle. He looked to center it, and it's tapped by Tulsa. Now Mayhew trying to get the puck back. It goes to Burke, left point. Burke gets stripped up by Farron. It was accidental, no call. Farron dumps it in, or he clears it out. Metcalf near side will throw it to Texera. 23 seconds left in Utah's power play. Grizz lead 1-0 as Betts crosses center ice left wing. Burke in the area as Betts dumps it in. Betts gets around Hilderman, but McKee will throw it to the far side, cut off by Texera. As over in the corner, Sandlin over to Texera, bounced off his stick, and it exits his zone. Grizzlies have to tag back to neutral ice. Now about to do it for the Grizzlies power play. Across to Burke, it tapped off his stick. Olsen challenges and throws it deeper in the Oilers zone. As Watson's out of the penalty box, he wants to pass it neutral ice, but it goes to center for Bertuzzi. He'll veer off into the left. Now to Ryan Olsen, back towards Bertuzzi. He skates in the corner, gets hit by Hume. Watson feeds the far circle. The only guy with Sandlin. Problem, he plays for the Grizzlies. Burke will throw it towards Sukanic. Puck wobbles on its side. His Oilers near side. Boudreau crosses center. Over to Olsen, who's challenged by Jensen. Battle along the near boards. Neutralized. Penner comes out with a puck. As Penner across towards Hume, the Colorado captain last year. Colorado College. Ahead towards... Yukura. Yukura didn't get a piece of it though, according to the linesman. And Ising's on the Grizzlies with 16 23 left in the third. Utah still leads 1 0. Second of 10 season meetings between the Grizz and the Oilers. Five here at Maverick Center and five at BOK Center. Carson Folk will take the draw against Tyler Penner. Folk wins it cleanly. Left wing, righty shot is blocked as Messner near side. Got it to center, moved it ahead to Boudreau, throws it back into the Grizzly zone. May Metcalf raises his left arm, and so does the linesman. Icing is on Tulsa, 16-12 left in regulation. Grizzlies have been a pretty good club traditionally over the last handful of years when leading after two periods. Just about automatic when leading after two, and that's the case here tonight. Grizzlies scored first. They've got the only goal. They are 20. They were 24-7 and one when scoring first last year. Grizz win the draw. Cutler across the Fair Brother left point. We're skating five on five. Lefty shot and glances off a stick as as Martel is in front of the net. Now the new tries. Cutler dumps it back in. Four minutes into the third period and counting. Utah leads one nothing. Boudreaux lets it go towards the near boards. Cutler gets it. Left wing shot. Blocker saved by Sukanic. As now Gallant. Chips up top for Underwood, right point. Underwood fanned on it. Tulsa pokes it into the Grizzly zone. Metcalf all the way to the near circle. will drop it off for Fairbrother. As Fairbrother challenged by Watson. Puck goes to the near corner as Folk try to get to Hilderman. Gallant cut in front of him. Folk has a glance off his stick. Martel left wing pass. It's picked off by Hilderman. A lot of interceptions and block shots on both sides. Up ahead as it goes to Krenkovic. Uh, drops it off for Folk. Right wing shot, and it's blocked by Mayhew. Two on one, Mayhew carries it into the zone. Right wing, Mayhew, backhand shot, saved by Sukanic. The Nick gets dislodged as, Ma Ma as uh, Mayhew, a lot of M's on this Grizzlies club this year, runs into the net. Pretty good look, two on one. And it looked like based on the angle that the Tulsa defenseman was at, Mayhew just had no choice but to call his own number. That was, yeah, that was it. The, the Tulsa defenseman decided to go ahead and play pass the whole way. And so that was Mayhew's call. But how about the Jets on Mayhew just to <laughs> kick it up in that next extra, extra gear and take off? Got that quick first step, and it seems like it's very deceptive. Doesn't seem like he's moving that fast, but before you know it, he's by you. Yeah. 
Looks like the work on the peg of the net as Mayhew dislodged it. They're talking with one of the workers, probably about that peg that's out there. It looks like we'll continue to play. There's the work on the ice there near Sukanik's net. 15-12 left in the third. A lot of fun action here at Maverick Center. Second of a seven-game homestand for the Grizzlies. We mentioned the Idaho series this upcoming Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock. Gear tickets, UtahGrizzlies.com. And then the Grizzlies will have a bye week. The Wichita Thunder will be in town November 8th, 10th, and 11th. Wichita 0-2 this season as they lost two games to the Kansas City Mavericks. They'll work on some ice near the crease. That was about the area where, Met, where Mayhew uh, ended up just kind of sliding hard uh, towards the net. Ended up dislodging the net, so they're working on some ice in the crease. I think that's the guy. There was, there was a fan that actually gave me, you know, I've always wanted an action figure, a bobblehead. I got my own rubber duck. It's got a microphone on it and some grizzlies paws. Very good looking, sharp duck. That looks like it's a lucky duck. Yeah, that's right. Grizzlies have been some lucky ducks here so far, leading 1 0. Grizz have outscored the Oilers 6 3 so far in this series. They continue to work on the ice near Tomas Sukanik's net. I had heard that Sukanik had an outstanding preseason for the Oilers, and he's just carried it on into a really what's been an outstanding effort for him so far. Draws in the far circle. Boy, we wish Zach Reynolds was here. He's watching the remote broadcast, and we wish him luck. Uh, wish he was here. As the draw, well, looks like the linesman says, my bad, we'll do it again. Carson Folk against Kyle Betts. Boy, how many face-offs has Betts taken today? It seems like just about all of them. This one's won by Tulsa as Hilderman skates around his net. Now he outlets it to new tries for Watson. Boy, Watson couldn't get a piece of it, though, and it's going to be icing on the Oilers. Looked like for a second, Watson, there at center ice, got a piece of it, but he didn't. And so we'll come back towards Tomas Sukanik with 15.05 left in the third. Fans take up a let's go Grizz chant. Pretty quiet crowd here. You can almost, I imagine, can ask Switch and Horner hearing us from over there near the bench <laughs> area. And for the second straight time, the linesman says, my bad. We'll do the face off over again, this time in the near circle. That's for Utah and Carson Folk, F-O-C-H-T for Tulsa. Draw one by the Oilers as Hilderman tried to lift it over and he hit his own guy in the face. And that's Andy Carroll. Well, Hilderman was over in the near corner. He tried to clear it out. He lifted it out of the zone. He ended up hitting his own guy, Andy Carroll, in the face. Carroll checks his face to make sure there's not blood there. Dropped him immediately. Boy, that's got a smart. Trainer Steve Lintern has a towel. Let's see if it's needed. As Carroll's now on the bench. Looked like it was more of a glancing blow than anything. Carroll gets a towel. Lintern looks at his face and says, ah, just a glancing blow. You'll be all right. Drives here's, in the left circle. Here's some water. Get ready for your next shift. <laughs> that's, that's how hockey works. It's like, <laughs> I got to be out there. I, I don't care if I'm bleeding. We got to go. Grizzlies win the draw. 1-0 Utah. Five minutes into the third period. Burke goes down after Utah won the faceoff. Sandlin over to Betts. Backhand shot goes high off the glass. Texera near boards. Throws it to the corner for Betts. Betts couldn't handle it as Legron or you know Doogie Legron lifted his stick. Tulsa gets the Dante Sheriff. He'll carry it out to new tries. Pass between the legs of Ryan Olson. Tech Sheriff feeds it to the center ice logo, taken by Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi down the middle, take a lefty shot. And he hits off a grizzly stick and flies out of play with 14-28. Might have been on the third. Might have been off Tech Sheriff's uh, stick. And yet another blocked, deflected. Uh, you know, impeded puck on its way to the net. Both teams have put together an outstanding defensive effort here. You like defense, you like goaltending, and you just like good passes. This is, this is your type of game. This has been good hockey. Olsen will take the draw against Brandon Cutler. Olsen is with the Grizzlies the first half of the 2017-2018 season. Olsen wins the faceoff. Bertuzzi over towards Legrome. He couldn't keep it in near point. Martell ahead to Cutler. He gets the center ice and dumps it in. Grizzly skating from right to left here in the third period as we see it from high top section 114. Idaho from left to right. Sheriff at center ice challenged by Wesley as Cutler skates along the Tulsa bench area. Dumps it to the right circle. Legrome gets there before Martell. As we get a whistle. After the whistle, Martell got pushed. They check Brandon Cutler's face for blood, I believe. Tulsa is going to get a high sticking penalty. 14.04 left in the third. 
No, it's going to be a Grizzly penalty. Slashing's the call, and it's Jordan Martel to the box. And Tulsa is going to go on the power play for the first time this third period. Fans can't believe it, but Martel's in the box for two. Let's see, they'll show the replay. Martel in the area with Legrone. And then Legrone pushed Martel. I tell you, it didn't look like there was much there. Grizzlies win the draw, fair brother. Unless it was something off the screen, didn't see much there. Two minutes for Slashy, Martel, 556 into the third. Grizzlies won the face off and cleared it out. Six minutes into the third, Utah still leads 1-0. Fairbrother at center ice dumps it back in as chasing after it's Hilderman deep in the Oilers zone as a stick goes flying and that was a stick of an oiler as Penner threw it. Center ice Olsen right wing pass to Sheriff action now in the Grizzlies zone. Bertuzzi high slot over to the left side near the corner now behind the net for Olsen who chips it to the right left side. Boudreaux over to Hilderman back to Boudreaux over to Hilderman right side. He gets to the right circle for Bertuzzi, dancing around in the circle. Bertuzzi up top for Hilderman, right side, across to Boudreaux. Boudreaux surveys, now throws to the left circle for Sheriff. Sheriff glides to the far goal line for Olsen. Olsen gets his shooting angle. Couldn't get a shot off, though. Grizzlies with active sticks. Gets it to Penner, who clears it out. Olsen patient with the puck there, but just too many sticks in the way. Blue line to blue line passes, connects for Olsen. Right point. And the puck lifted on him as he was trying to clear it over to the left corner. And we get a stoppage of play with 52 seconds left in the Tulsa power play. 12.56 left in the third. Tulsa seeing with that widespread on their power play, just mostly because of the success they're seeing with it. Even though they haven't scored anything on it, they're generating some chances and generating pressure. Officials talked over for a bit as to where the faceoff is going to be, and it's going to be in the Grizzlies zone in the right circle. Josh Wesley argues the case and says the draw should be at neutral ice. But it's going to be an offensive zone faceoff for Tulsa. He scored two power play goals last night. Draw one by Carson Folk, but the Grizzlies poking out of the zone. Legrone, right wing pass to the near side for Krenkovic. I hope I'm saying that right today. As Udrea or Carroll, left wing pass. Carroll back in after taking that puck to the face. As Josh Wesley near side trying to clear it out, couldn't. Carson Folk, right side, dance around the circle. Couldn't get a shooting angle. Krenkovic over towards Carroll. High slot, fakes a shot, now gets it to Krenkovic. Now up top for Carroll, who glides towards the right point. Now across to Doogie Legrome. Now to the far side. Old Tulsa got it across towards Krenkovic, but the puck bounced over his stick. Kyle Betz skates over towards the near wing boards, and he clears it out. Ten seconds left in the power play as Jordan Martel gets to his feet. Tulsa across the center, fans on a pass. Cutler will clear it all the way towards Sukanic. Martel's out of the box. It's a successful penalty kill by the Grizzlies. 12 minutes and counting left in the third. Utah leads 1-0. Tulsa throws to the near side. Constantini will throw it to Mike McKee, make that tab Bertuzzi, who skates down Broadway. Bertuzzi throws to the right corner, chases after it, and gets it. Feeds it from one corner to the other. They try to start the sheriff. Puck bounced over a stick. Martel gets held up. Now he gets dragged down, no call. Cutler left point dumps it in. And Sukanic throws to the near side. Reggie Millette battles with Burke. Puck glides towards the left point. Fairbrother wasn't there, and he'll have to chase it down in the Grizzlies zone. Fairbrother, outlet pass to center for Martel. Now left wing for Cutler at the left point, trying to get back towards a cutting Martel. Martel gets it shot, saved by Sukanic. Rebound goes to Millette in the near corner. It's Millette now behind Tulsa's net. Grizzlies make a line change, get some new forwards on the ice. Constantini wearing number 10. He's been a good defenseman for Tulsa here this weekend. He'll skate down the middle. He's got an AHL deal with San Diego. Played with the Ottawa 67s previously. As Lodge loses it center ice, sporting a beard. Grizzlies dump it in, chasing after it's Boudreau. As he'll slide it towards the far wing boards. Cole Gallant throws it towards Dean Yukura behind Utah's net. Yukura gets held up by Doogie Legrome. Both guys were at number five. Two on two battle as Boudreau boxes out. I think Tyler Penners are hacking away. Now, Gallant gets pushed. Continuing to scrum. Yakura doing a good job holding his own. Gallant hits Boudre as Tulsa comes out of the pile with the puck. Farron loses it center ice. Fairbrother gets it as he'll back it out into his own zone. Now, outlet it to Cutler who gets knocked down. Fitz trying to skate in. Now, it goes to the right side. Farron enters his zone. Right circle, righty shot. Saved by Metcalf. And Garrett holds on with 10 18. 
left in regulation. That's only the that's the first shot that Tulsa's taken here in the third period. Timeout on the ice will take one as well. 10-18 left in the third. Utah still leads 1-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. left in the third Utah leads 1-0 in a matchup that's really been dominated by defense and goaltending Tim what have you seen so far in the third I, I've seen a total tilt it, uh, as far as you know the gameplay going back and forth Grizzlies are not now able to hold off that Tulsa pressure kind of keep them to the outside and that includes on the power play no real significant good looks and we've been able to help out Garrett Metcalf as he's in net be able to, you know, not necessarily take a break, but not have the same sustained pressure that the Tulsa Oilers had in the first and second periods. Garrett Metcalf talking things over with Trent Miner earlier in the day. Sounded like Miner was going to get the start, but Metcalf is in there and seemed like a pretty good choice by Ryan Kanas, which is uh, Metcalf's been outstanding. There's a luxury there, too. Okay. Hey, you know, what are you going to go with your number one or do you go with your number one? You know, that's right. <laughs> I think we'll go with the number one. I think we'll go with the number one. <laughs> Drow's going to be in the near circle of the Grizzly zone. Fans having a good time here on a Sunday afternoon. Kyle Betts on the ice with Nathan Burke. Ryan Sandlin, defensive pairing. Kyle Mayhew and Josh Wesley as they're continuing to work on the ice over in the crease near Tomas Sukanik. Sukanik's been good enough, win or lose, he might end up getting a star tonight. His pro well, debut, and it looks like he'll be a good one. Well earned. I think he's only 20 years old. He can have nothing more stronger than a Coca-Cola after the game. Right. Or maybe an energy drink. But he looks like a pretty good prospect, played in the WHL the last couple years. And I think Tulsa fans have to be really intrigued about the prospects of him this year. Tulsa fans haven't had the best goaltending over the last couple of years, so there's something, a, a spark to be uh, excited about. Betts will take the draw against T-Bone Cod. Betts kicked out of the face off circle. A couple of good pump fakes by Keston, the linesman. He drops the puck, and it's won by Nathan Burke and the Grizzlies. Josh Wesley skates around his net. Over to center ice, Ryan Sandlin, the son of a coach, gets to Burke right side. Burke. Throws to Mayhew left side. Mayhew gets around a skater, but Cod with a good poke check. Tulsa gets it three on three. They cross center ice. Farron enters the zone as the puck wobbles on side to the corner. As Cod gets hit by Burke, puck back to the far corner. Wesley moves it ahead to center ice. Beck poked away by Polson. Tulsa gets around a skater as Michael Farron right side shot and is blocked by Mayhew. Mayhew's hurt. Mayhew will limp towards the bench as Farron took a shot. It was blocked by the knee of Mayhew. And he is hurt as he gets to the bench. But that one smarted. Center ice. Carson Folk enters from the left. He'll drop it off for Polson. He's cut off by Yakur, who's played well. Penner will backhand it out to center ice. We'll check the availability on Kyle Mayhew as he's being looked over by Colin Lee, the fourth year Grizzlies trainer. Watson enters from the right side. He gets blasted by Texera wearing the A. Is Krenkovic over to the left side. Lefty shot. Saved by Metcalf. That shot was taken by Andy Carroll as Texera around Metcalf's net. Near wing pass to Messner, who moves ahead to Penner. Play starting to get physical once again as Penner dumps it in after crossing center eyes. Andy Carroll skates along the Tulsa goal line. Now he chips to the near side for Hilderman. Outlet pass towards Carson Folk. It's incomplete, and with 8.54 left in the third, Tulsa's call for icing. Play Farron took that shot from the right side, and that one got Mayhew, and immediately. Instant pain. Colin Lee sitting with him now and talking about it, and looks like at least uh, calmed down for the moment. But uh, I mean, at least he's not in the tunnel or in the locker room right, right. now. He's staying on the bench. Right. A couple sits of water, and uh, he might be out for his next shift. I will keep an eye on it. Draws in the far circle, won by Martell and the Grizzlies. Action in the Tulsa zone as Fairbrother skates around Tulsa's net. Well, the Grizzlies sure can use some insurance here. Fairbrother over to Martell, right circle. 
Up top for Underwood, left point. They'll wrap it around the boards. Everybody vacated that right side. Martell skates over there along with Hilderman for Tulsa. Martell hits Hilderman. Hilderman gets the puck now across to Carroll. He skates around Tulsa's net. He'll chip it off the near boards. He goes to center ice. Watson couldn't handle it. Fairbrother tried to move it ahead. Now Watson gets it back. And he'll wrap it around the walls. He was in Grizzlies territory. Metcalf lets it go to the far corner. Tulsa makes a full line change. 8-18 and counting left in the third. 1-0 Grizzlies. Cutler crosses center ice, lifts it into the right corner. It bounces off of one hop onto the end wall, deep in the Oilers' zone. Puck goes from one corner to the other as Tamber Tuzzi glides over there. As two-on-two -two battle, left side, Betts taps to the corner for Martell. The Rooster skates towards the left circle, now top for Jensen. One-timer, and it's blocked by Constantini. Tulsa gets it. They try to carry it out of the zone. Burke challenges the, the near wall. Burke throws to the left side, picked off by Dante Sheriff. He's got good speed. He skates towards the right side. Now he enters the zone. Veers off to the left. Left circle, righty shot. And hits a stick and glances off the glass. As Grizzlies throw it to the near side. Betts battles with Bertuzzi. Puck wobbles to center ice where it's taken by Boudreaux at number 16. Over to Bertuzzi. Now Constantini back to the Oilers zone. And so move it ahead. Bertuzzi, left side, lefty shot goes wide. Ryan Olson, right point, bobbles the puck for a second, and it kicks off of Wesley out to center ice. Tulsa back up with it. McKee around the wall. Sheriff lets it go to Olson, right side near the corner. Olson back to Sheriff, who's now in the left corner. Now to Mike McKee, high slot, shot, and is blocked by Sandlin. Grizzlies clear it out. And it got redirected to no icing. Grizzlies make a full line change. Jensen stays on the ice as Sheriff crosses center of speed. He enters his own from the left. Drops it off for McKee. Penner hits McKee. Now left side. Oilers holding his arm in the air. Dylan fits off. Penalty is going to be called. As right side. McKee dances around just outside the right circle. Throws it between the legs of Messner. Now Legrone over towards Farron. Righty shot and it hit off his own guy, T-Bone Cod. Dylan Fitz in the left point held his held his hand in the air. That's the universal signal of I hope he didn't see that. <laughs> One of the two referees though did see it, and tripping's gonna be the call as Dylan Fitz will go to the penalty box. No serve. Two minutes with 6:37 left in the third. Utah still leads one nothing. They show the replay. Fitz didn't do anything. It just the Tulsa player just kind of was just trying to force his way towards the left point. Fitz didn't actively get a stick out or anything like that. And Tulsa gets a power play. They're second of the third period. Interesting to see what Christian Horn will have his PK unit out there doing, how they set up. Grizzlies win the face off. Underwood whap, wraps around the boards, cut off in the left point by Tulsa. Oilers from left to right here in the third period, as we see from section 114. Sheriff, left side just outside the circle, gets to the far goal line. Olsen shot, saved by Metcalf. As over to the left side, Hilderman, left point, across to Boudreau. He's on the right side, over to Hilderman. One-timer, saved by Metcalf, and he holds on. Olsen was net front, and would have gotten the rebound. Underwood and Olsen push each other. Great job by Garrett Metcalf corralling that one, because if Olsen would have gotten, would have, if it would have been a rebound, Olsen probably puts it away. Once again, rebound control. Draws going to be in the left circle. I think whoever does the three stars should probably give Garrett Metcalf first, second, and third star tonight. <laughs> maybe give maybe give Cutler like that third star for scoring the goal. Draws in the left circle, won by the Grizzlies. Josh Wesley will wrap it around to the left side. Bouncing puck, Boudreaux couldn't keep it in. Two on two, Penner skates towards the right side. They'll fire fire righty shot, saved by Sukanic. Rebound goes to the Oilers. Two on two, Penner called his own number. Sukanic made a nice kick save. As Hilderman throws to the far side, less than six minutes left in regulation. 11 left in the Tulsa power plays. Olsen skates in. Now he feeds it to the left side for Sheriff at the circle. Up top for Bredrea. Action in the Grizzlies zone. Hilderman over to Bertuzzi on the right side. Bertuzzi dances around. Now he's just outside the circle. He feeds up top for Hilderman. He slides it across to Boudreaux. Boudreaux skates towards the high slot, switching places with Hilderman. Now Bertuzzi gets it on the right side, dancing around, being shadowed by Mayhew. Didn't miss a shift after blocking the shot. Boudreaux, high slot, gets over to the Hilderman. Now centers it to Olsen. Shot blocked by Wesley. Mayhew clears it out. What toughness for Kyle Mayhew. As he's on the ice, didn't miss a shift. Mayhew pokes it away from Bertuzzi. He'll come off the ice after a good shift. 
Well, heart and determination for Kyle Mayhew, the former national champion at the University of Denver back in 2022. Carroll skates down the middle, neutral ice, left wing pass. The Oilers enter into the zone, they get around Teixeira. Now it goes to the right side, Legrome. That was late in the power play, Carroll feeds it to the left side. And Krenkovic couldn't handle it, Grizzlies clear it out. Seven seconds left in the power play. The Sukanic will slide it to Legrone in the near side. Now to Carroll, who skates down the middle. He gets the new tries with a good speed. Grizzlies back at full strength. Successful penalty kill. Carroll centers it as Holson cuts in front. Shot, and it goes wide. Net wobbled for a second. Didn't get dislodged. Boy, there was a good look there by Tulsa. The shot just went, went just wide. Or else we could have had a tie game. 4.28 left in the third. Utah leads 1-0. We're back in one minute. After this word from Rio Tinto and America First Credit Union. That was lucky. What fun action here at Maverick Center. Utah leads one to nothing. 428 left in the third period. Tulsa 32 shots. Utah with 22. Two successful penalty kills in the third period by the Grizzlies. As Tulsa wins the neutral zone draw, skating from left to right. As Legrom, near wing pass to Michael Farron. It connects Farron to the right side, being challenged by Cutler. Good defensive play as Farron runs into his own guy. Right wing caught with a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Garrett holds on with 414 left in the third as we get another whistle. Right, Tulsa's really given the Grizzlies all they can handle here tonight, but Grizzlies are holding on to that lead. Yeah, the second half of this third period has not been the same as the first half. Tulsa's decided to pick it up and definitely apply pressure. You got to hand it to both goaltenders and both defensive units. This has been an outstandingly pl well played hockey game. Betts will take the draw against Davis T Bone Cod. As Utah wins the face, I just like that name, Davis T Bone Cod. That's that's a top ten name in the name in this league. Ahead to Michael Underwood, who skates down the middle. Now he crosses center ice. Three on three, drops off for Burke. Right side, lefty shot. Saved by Sukanic. And he holds on. Burke scored Utah's first goal last night. He was acquired a few days ago in a trade with the Orlando Solar Bears. And these really look sharp for the Grizzlies through two games. You have 4 one left in the third. You're up by one. Grizzlies going here with their aces, and we'll see what uh, how they set up and uh, how they work their attack. I'm, I'm thinking probably mostly the wings and then uh, bringing it in down low and then back out to the center. Betts wins another faceoff, but it goes between the two defensemen out to center ice. Betts has taken, what, 75% of Utah's faceoffs and won most of them. Tulsa back deep in their own zone. Far side is McKee. will wrap it along the far wall. Cut off by Josh Wesley. Grizzlies captain with a righty shot. And it's blocked, I think, of his own guy in Cutler. Uh, actually, that was Burke. As Polson, right wing to Farron, who steps over the line. Right wing, righty shot, saved by Metcalf. Rebound goes to Sandlin, who feeds to Mayhew behind Utah's net. Mayhew battles with Farron. As Mayhew backhands it out to Sandlin, who gets pushed. Sandlin across to Wesley. Josh Wesley, the Grizzlies captain, crosses center ice. Wesley dumps it in. He's played more games with the Oilers than the Grizzlies in his career. Big time hit as Wesley just leveled. Hilderman as over to the left point. That's where the fans are excited. Fits with a shot saved by Sukanic. It got redirected. What a stop by the Tulsa netminder. 308 and counting left in the third. Still 1-0 Utah. We'll keep an eye on Tulsa's net to see when Rob Murray pulls Sukanic for the extra attacker. Three minutes are now left. Tulsa's outshot the Grizzlies 34-24. Up ahead, Ryan Olsen crosses center ice left wing. He'll wrap it around the wall as Bertuzzi collides with Teixeira in the near corner. Grizzlies hold their face that they're hit with a high stick. No call. That was Brian, Brian Yu 
Left point, Oilers in the attack zone. Legron right side, righty shot, kick save by Metcalf again. Dina Kura back hands it, it goes over the head of Legron. Fitz chases after it. Fitz battles. He gets cut off in the left point of the Oilers zone. Up ahead, Ryan Olsen, who drops an off for Bertuzzi. He gets hit by Fairbrother. Olsen gets pushed by Penner. Sheriff over in the corner, held up by Underwood. Fairbrother battles with Bertuzzi. Now Fitz and Legron it goes to the right point. Ryan Olsen falls down. Grizzlies get it up ahead to Penner. He's on the left side, two on one. Penner with a shot, saved by Sukanik. What a stop by Sukanik. As Grizzlies get the rebound, Gallant over towards Penner. Penner gets the puck left side, just outside the circle, trying to get it to Gallant. Gallant in the corner, glides over there, he gets hit. As he gets held up by Legron. Gallant holds strong. He gets up top looking for Fairbrother, wobbling puck, high slot, Underwood. Skates down the middle. Underwood now to the left circle. Good poke check by Bertuzzi. Left side, Cutler shot. Saved by Sukanik. Now right side, Fairbrother swings and misses. Bertuzzi, 143 left in the third. Bertuzzi lifts it out as it bounces into the Grizzlies zone. Tolson makes a line change. Sukanik still in there. Underwood up ahead to Cutler. Glances up at his stick as Tulsa out of their blue line. Diagonal pass to Watson. Bouncing puck. It hit off his stick. No icing. Mayhew deep in the Grizzlies zone. Drops off for Wesley near his side. Now Cutler will... Throw a diagonal pass, nobody home for the Grizzlies. Cutler glides off the ice, no icing as Tulsa will bounce it off the side of their own net. Burke over to Cutler, left wing shot, saved by Sukanik. What kind of an awkward looking position he was in. The right side, Burke with a shot, saved by Sukanik again. What great action of the Tulsa netminder, absolutely standing on his head as the Grizzlies have had, what, one shot after another, and he's been told to the task. This is one of the best goalie battles I've seen in a very, <laughs> very long time. Metcalf's been outstanding, but so is Sukanik. I think Rob Murray might use his one time out here. A little over one minute left in regulation. And the Oilers are going to try to figure out a way to get on the board to tie the game. And the Grizzlies trying to put this one on ice. Well, you never, when you come to a hockey game, you're never quite sure what type of game you're going to see. We've had ourselves an absolute battle. As both teams have really put together a great effort. You know, some of those games where, you know, it's almost a shame somebody has to win. This is one of those where it's really a shame somebody has to lose. But that's just, that's just the way it works. Both goalies going at it. And <laughs> Sukanik over at the bench, leaning over, taking a taking a a, 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 a well-earned rest for a second as he's I'm trying to figure if it was a lean or if it was a full-on just gas. I'm, kind of really, yeah, <laughs> I'm lunging over the, the boards right now. One minute, eight seconds left in regulation. Draws gonna be the Oilers zone. Important face-offs here. And because of that, Kyle Betts will take the draw once again for the Grizzlies. I see a pattern. <laughs> Just about every face-off. It's Kyle Betts. And this time the face-offs won by Tulsa. The Oilers keep from left to right. Sukanik still in there. Hilderman will carry it out to center ice. Now he veers off to the left. Sukanik skates towards the bench. Carson Folk wraps it around the wall. Six on five. Tulsa's net is empty. We get a whistle. I, I wonder if the extra attacker got in there well before Sukanik got to the bench. John Draw's going to be at center ice. I'm not sure what happened there, but Sukanik's going to come back on the ice. Well, they've already been called for too many men once. Maybe the puck exit play at the protected ending or something. A little bit surprised, and they stopped play there. Draw's going to be at center ice, and it's won by the Grizzlies. Sukanik is in there right now. 52 seconds left. Fitz, his pass is picked off by Boudreaux. Puck lifts in the air. Fitz with a hand pass. And Burke plays it. No call. As over towards Mayhew, across to Wesley. As he moves the head, looking for Sandlin. As he gets spun around, couldn't accept the pass. Carl Boudre, a good defensive play. Grizzlies call for icing, and that's important because that means that they can get a neutral zone draw and get Sukanik off for the extra attacker. But we thought the last faceoff was the most important. Guess what? This one's the most important. And who's taking it? It's Kyle Betts for Utah, Ryan Olsen for Tulsa. Six on five, Tulsa's net's empty, 36 seconds left. Utah leads 1-0. Tulsa wins the draw. Hilderman, right point, 
across, but it exits the zone. Boudreaux has to reset. He'll skate back into his own end. 28 seconds left. Boudreaux backhand pass to center ice was soft. Mayhew tries to cut it off. Olsen collides. Action now in the Grizzlies zone. Bets with it. He'll throw it across to Josh Wesley. Less than 20 seconds. Bertuzzi over to Sheriff. Now Olsen right side. 12 seconds left. Mayhew holds up Olsen. Olsen gets it to Bertuzzi. Goes over a stick. Hilderman over to Boudreaux. Seven seconds left. He fakes a shot. Throws it to Sheriff. Far corner centers down front. Shot. And Bertuzzi couldn't handle it. Now on his backside. Shot. Saved by Metcalf. Grizzlies win. Grizzlies win. Grizzlies win. As Garrett Metcalf was absolutely unbelievable. Grizzlies win one to nothing. And there is no doubt about it. As Brandon Cutler scored the only goal of the game. 13-17 in, and a losing effort Sukanik was unbelievable. What a furious rally there as Tulsa centered it out in front at the end, and the Grizzlies hold strong as they win the first two games of the regular season. They get a two-game sweep of Tulsa, and what an effort by both teams. I don't know, we'll see another game as exciting as this one, albeit a one nothing affair. How about Garrett Metcalf? That's about the best he's looked. A shutout in the preseason, and here tonight, 35 save shutout. The Salt Lake City native gets a hug from Trent Miner, and he was absolutely unbelievable. Earned every moment of that. That is impressive. What a game. Brandon Cutler with the only goal in the contest. 11:37 into the second period, with Keone Teixeira and Cole Gallant gaining the assist. Boy, when you come to a hockey game, that's exactly the type of game you want to see. Both teams just battling their tails off. And boy, what an effort. If this is any indication as how the rest of the season's going to go, you're going to want to come on down, 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 down to Maverick Center. Pat McAfee, if you're watching, Friday night. you got to be here when the Grizzlies take on the Steelheads. Best rivalry in the league. Our you two league Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, College Game Day crew. Come on down to Maverick Center. Our undefeated streak will be on the line against the Steelheads. Utah 2-0 on the season. Tulsa, really a tough luck loss. They did everything but score. Their goaltender, at, uh, you know, like, I never understood the cliche standing on his head, but that's what he did. And Metcalf did the same for Utah. Silver lining for Tulsa is that they found their goalie for the year. Yeah, absolutely. So um, they'll have a pretty good year if they play like they did today. Uh, they'll find a way to get some. Uh, they'll find a way to get some goals. They've got some talented forwards. Grizzlies, great defensive effort. Pretty much an all-new defensive lineup this year. They're getting set for the three stars of the game. The number three star will be the Tulsa goaltender, Tomas Sukanik. He probably should be the number two star with how he played. I don't think that's how you say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hagan tried there. <laughs> Number two star is Brandon Cutler. Tomas Sukanik, the third star. I didn't even know if I was saying it right either, but Cutler's the number two star. He got the game winner. He was the optimum first goal of the game scorer as well. There was only one goal in the game. The number one star, and he's going to get a big time hand from the Maverick Center crowd. 35 save shutouts. Boy, what can you say? Hats off to Garrett Metcalf. What a job. It is his first professional shutout. He had one shutout for Mercyhurst back in the 2018-2019 season. Preseason shutout, and here this afternoon as he tosses a t-shirt into section 113. Garrett Metcalf, the number one star tonight. The Salt Lake City native is off to an outstanding start this year. We'll see if we'll pick up Mary Lou's in the interview. Thank you. 